If you don't look like somebody that I'd want to invest my money in, I'm not going to invest my money in you. If I walked in, I had a million dollars to invest today and I walked in and I looked at you and I didn't even hear you yet, but I looked at you and I didn't believe in you by the look at you, I'm out. People have eyeballs and they are judging you before you even open your mouth. If you can recruit somebody on my team, I'll give you 10 million cash mm. because come after me, come after one of my guys because they don't work for money. What they work for is what 90% of sales teams, their number one problem is, is they're untrained. Period. This is 90% of their problem. Listen, this is so stupid. They don't know how to do their job. How much of sales do you think is scripted versus just natural? 20% is a script. Maybe 10. Tonality is probably 60%. 30% would be your body language. You were like, this year, we're probably going to do 30, 40, 50 million dollars. And now you're telling me you guys are over nine figures. You got a chance to hit multiple nine figures. And it's all because you actually took it seriously. If anybody's watching this right now, the secret in life, this is the secret to me. You s I just want to know when I walk in the room and I do business, I want to look attractive, you know, like being attractive is really important to us. Yeah. Because ugly people don't do very well online. <laughs> and I can't change this shit. Like I can't get a Ryan Pineda face, right? You know what I'm saying? So I got to get like a body. You know what I'm saying? And then this shit starts to get tight and it looks good. And they're like, oh, well, he's that bald dude with the in shape. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Bald in shape, dude. It's like a new edge. Yeah. It's like the unfair deal. Yeah. And everybody's chasing money. So we decided to make a choice to choose health over money. Mm. And dude, we're making more money than we know what to do with, but really we're freaking happy, dude. What's up, Wealth Builders? Today, I've got the fastest growing sales trainer on the internet. This guy has been on the show before. And let me tell you, since he's been on the show last time, a lot has changed in his life, his business, everything else. Um, you know, I think by when we did the first episode, we were just talking about it. He had about 30,000 subscribers on YouTube. Now he's got, you know, over 400,000, tons on Instagram. Uh, you've probably seen him. He's super intense. He's not going to hold back and telling you the truth. I actually had the privilege of having him at our last WealthCon. And I'm just so excited to have this guy, Andy Elliott. What's up? Yeah, number one, I appreciate you. And I know why you guys follow him because he's real. Obviously, you put on amazing events. You know, a lot of people can put on a thousand person plus event or 2,000 once a year. You're putting them on quarterly now. Yeah. So the cool thing is, is that, you know, how you know if you find a good leader is if they're doing what you're teaching, mm. right? Yep. I mean, that's a good leader and that's, and that's worthy of following somebody when they do what they say they're going to do. Cause most people are just running their mouth nowadays and nobody's really doing it. Yeah. So you're continuing to grow. You're continuing to stay real. I hear you talk about God a lot. Yeah. I hear you talk about a things that a lot of people say, stay away from, mm -hmm. you know, I don't really talk politics, but you talk a lot about God. We talk yep. about it a lot too. It doesn't mean that you're perfect, yep. but you're going out there and you're putting yourself out there. You don't care what other people think and you're real, man. So, you know, I love it. So anytime we get a chance to come into Vegas, or be around you. Yeah. You know, I see the way that you run with your family. I see the way you run with your team. You know, you're infectious. You got, you know, a good, uh, you, you're just doing it all. So you're being a good example of being a leader and leaders make leaders. Mm. So we love it. I love it, dude. No, and I appreciate your friendship as well, dude. And it's been so cool to see your growth since we first met, because I remember, you know, we met through Bradley and Brad took you to one of my events mm -hmm. he was speaking at maybe yeah. like uh, maybe a little over a year ago. And I remember asking Brad, I go, hey, Brad, who's the most impressive person you had your, on your podcast that no one knows about? And he goes, Andy Elliott. It was like super quick. He told me that before I met you. And then, you know, he brought you to the event. We met. I was like, all right, this guy's cool. And, you know, then we had dinner. We did the first podcast. And I think at the time you were like, hey, I got a business, like we're crushing it. You guys were already doing multiple eight figures. And you're like, I just want to learn how to build my brand better because mm -hmm. we're not tapping in enough. That's a new climate as a brand. Yeah. Look, dude, a lot of people could have a hundred million dollars. They could have a private jet, but nobody cares. Yeah. Like, honestly, like nobody cares. dude. Honestly, at the end of the day, nobody even cares if you make money or what. They believe in what you believe in. Mm. And that's your brand. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that think building a brand is going and watching other people's social media and then going to their channel and regurgitating what they're saying. And that's why they're not growing. Mm. And that's why I'll tell you, like Brad said, dude, you're the content. He's like, look, what are your beliefs? I was like, dude, I love people and I believe everybody's qualified for a good life. He goes, lean into that shit, get passionate and go hard. Mm. And when they start hating, lean into it more, put more gas on the fire and go hard. You know, you probably get people ragging on you about your hair all the time. All the time. Who 
cares? And it doesn't even bother you. Matter of fact, it's an algorithm feeder. Come on, man. <laughs> Comment away. Let's yep. go. Let's get this thing out there. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm just making a point. Like everybody's got something to say that isn't doing something. Right. But anyway, so, um, you know, it's like, uh, when Brad said, Hey, this guy's going to blow up, you know, Brad just said, Andy, like, dude, I see that you're not afraid. And like, if you look, some of these guys, he talked about you. He's like, Ryan, don't give a shit what people think about us here. <laughs> Nobody uses yeah. an example. Yeah. He goes, he don't care. Matter of fact, he changes the colors just to piss them off. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's like, but, but he's, he's him. And that's why people love him. Yeah. He's like, he's real. Mm. And that's, I'm real, real Bradley. Yeah. He's like, so, you know, you just be real, like, and that's your brand. And he goes, and by the way, the brand is going to carry more weight and get you into more rooms than money. It will. 1000%. Yeah. He goes, so like, just, just be yourself, be real. The people that are like you, they're going to find you. The people that, you know, can feel your spirit and that you're real because it's a spirit in order to inspire somebody. You got to carry a spirit in you. Yep. Right. Yep. And you carry a spirit, man. It's just of love. You know what I'm saying? The way that you talk, you know, I get a little intense. Sometimes I get wild because that's my spirit. My spirit is I want to attack. Mm -hmm. Right. But your spirit is smooth. It's, it's Brad's is smooth. Yeah. You know, you never see Brad, Brad really get pissed off, but you just did a podcast with Keaton today. Bam. You know, <laughs> he's like, he's like wanted to chew the microphone up while he's talking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, but anyways, but yeah, we have blown up and it's because I took the advice that you gave me, Brad gave me, the greats said, just create a brand. And a lot of people, they think that they're building their brand because they have a logo, they have a name, but they're not real. Yeah. And people know that they're not real. Yeah. And their teams don't emulate them. Well, and I'll tell you this, different. one thing I've started to realize on social media is like you said, right? You lean into the hate and the things that make you different. <laughs> But I came up with a new saying that just randomly came out while I was telling somebody, I go, you can't compete with unique. Mm. So at the end of the day, if you're trying to go be like Andy mm -hmm. or like me, yeah. that's not you. Like you're, you're just copying somebody, right? But it's everybody it. is unique in their own way. You, you've got your weird quirks. You got your hobbies. You got your belief system, your energy, how you talk, everything, how you look. Mm -hmm. You're funny. You're serious. You're intent. Whatever your thing is. You're unique in your own way mm -hmm. and nobody can ever replicate that. Yeah. And that's, that's the secret power. Um, a lot of people, they can't find their own identity. And by the way, your identity develops and evolves every day. Yeah. If you really aspire to change people's lives, I mean, and really aspire to be a leader, you're going to have to change every day. Yep. Every time we meet, you're different. Your eyes look different. Mm. Do when you change your eyes, change colors. Mm. I can see in people's souls. And I can tell whether they're growing or they're dying. And so can you. Yeah. You can say hi to anybody when you walk by and you can tell whether they love life and they have progress in it, or you can tell whether they're stuck and they're stagnant. Mm. You can tell whether they've been training and they're sharp. You can tell whether they're shaking people's hands and walking around and pouring love into people, or you can tell that they got that look on their face. What's in it for me. Mm. And this is transactional. You can tell really who's by your side. You can tell who really texts you and is checking in on you to see how you're doing. You can tell when somebody calls you, whether it's a chess game yep. and there's something coming on in the future. If everybody would just become real, they would have everything they want and more and everybody would be taken care of. And power of relationships, when I met Brad and probably why Brad said that is I told him, I said, dude, I'm going to be your greatest student. Mm. I want you to think about this. You coach so many people. Yep. Who's competing to be your greatest student? Whoever it is has probably told you. Yeah. They've probably told, I told Brad, I said two things. I said, number one, Brad, okay, I'll never lie. Okay, I'll always, always um, do whatever I say I'm going to do with you. Also, I'm going to pay you more money than anyone else has ever paid you. I don't need shit from you. Mm. I'm going to pay you the most. I use his Lightspeed platform. Yep. And my goal was to pay Brad more than anyone has ever paid him using his program. Mm. Number two. I said, anything you ever teach me, I'm going to master it like Kobe Bryant mastered basketball. And I'm going to do it so great that you're going to come back around and want to learn it from me. Mm. But you are my teacher. Right. Like Karate Kid and Miyagi, right? <laughs> yeah. And I said, dude, nobody wants it more than me. And I was like, so anything that you think I need to know, I want to be your greatest student. Think about this. How many people just show up, consume content, they take in information, but then they don't change. They get a couple small wins through the year. You have a couple students right now. Somebody watching this, like who's, who's your greatest student, mm -hmm. whoever they are, they'll call their shot. Yeah. 
They'll say, Ryan, I'm going to be your greatest student. And guess what? Those are the same people that keep showing up to events. Yeah. They always want you to know that they see your face. Why? Maybe there's an opportunity with you and them down the road. Dude, me and Brad have opened up so many opportunities together. Never planned. Yep. Never planned. That's the cool thing. If I was like with your student, like I would be like, dude, I would be in front of your face all the time. I would be making sure that you're aware of what I'm doing by doing it, not by telling you I'm doing it, but by doing it. So it inspires you that when the teacher gets inspired, then the teacher's like, man, maybe we need to be more now. Yeah. Maybe we need to do something together. Yeah. You know, every day you're looking for the next person to work for you. And we talked about this on the last podcast. Yeah. I'm still looking for my army. Yeah. I have about a hundred people. Last time we were together, I was about at 15 people. Now I'm at a hundred people. We call it Elliot army. Mm -hmm. And dude, it's like, we're, we're all wanting to grow. We're all wanting to build. We need more people that are like us. So we're just waiting on some people to step up, but the brand, it holds more weight to me than anybody with any amount of money. So, so the jerk in the room with all the money that's all stuck up in his private jet who thinks he's cool, he's out. <laughs> like yeah, seriously. Nobody knows him. Yeah. And it's, and they call, oh, well, I don't want to be a YouTuber. It's called a brand. Yeah. It it's opens called, doors. There's a reason yeah. Mark Cuban and Elon Musk and these guys put out content. Yeah, tell me where everybody is every day yep. in their phones. Oh, Everybody right media. now is probably consuming this, not from a PC anymore. They're probably consuming it from their phones. Yeah. I don't know on what platform, but that's why you post it everywhere because you know your people are everywhere. Yeah. And the deal is, is that we're in the era of the influencer. So in case anybody didn't realize, your money doesn't mean nothing because it's not doing anything for anybody. Yeah. People want to feel the influence. Entrepreneurs, if you want to grow your business, there is no better investment than your own personal brand. The smartest thing I ever did was start creating content and investing into my brand. Ever since then, we've been able to triple our business. I've been able to raise more money than ever to continue buying more real estate. And it's all because I create content just like this. Now, a lot of people have asked me, Ryan, how am I supposed to do it? I don't know where to start. I don't know who's gonna edit it. I don't know even what kind of setup or camera or anything to do. Well, here's the thing. We can help you with all of that at Pineda Media. We have a podcast checklist that you can actually get for free at PinedaMedia.com that's going to go over everything you need on starting a podcast. But to make matters even better, we'll actually edit your podcast for you. We'll repurpose it into short form clips like you see on my Instagram and my TikTok so that people will start seeing those clips and watching your podcast and in turn being customers or investors in your business. So if you want the one-stop solution where you can get everything done for you, plus get the education you need to grow your personal brand, then you need to go to PinedaMedia.com and book a free call with our team. You can also go get that free podcast checklist and that training program absolutely free by just going there. So go check it out. You know, I had that realization three plus years ago during COVID. I was a very successful house flipper making millions of dollars. And I just realized, I was like, man, th this is it? Or is there bigger ways to help people and open more doors and, and, grow this thing even bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I took that risk and I'm like, wow, this is crazy that not everyone at least tries to do this. And then, you know, what's even more impressive is when there's guys like you who, you know, I think at the time you were like, yeah, you know, this year we're probably going to do, you know, 30, 40, $50 million. And I was like, and you're now just really starting to take building a brand seriously. Like mm -hmm. you've already, you don't even need to build a brand, right? Like at that point, people could be like, oh dude, I'm good. Right. And now you're telling me you guys are over nine figures. You got a chance to hit multiple nine figures. And it's all because you actually took it seriously. We're coachable, just like you. If anybody's watching this right now, the secret in life, this is the secret to me. And I know this is your secret too. So I'll give it. You self develop so fast. Mm -hmm. You self develop every day. Yep. Most people. They want to make just enough money to pay their house off, to pay their bills, to get the car they want. And once they get it, they'll get enough stories to tell. They'll read enough books. They'll take enough courses to get them to where they want to be. I call that a standard. Mm -hmm. And then they slow down. Because they get content. I'm never going to slow down. Yeah. And neither are you. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because it's disrespectful to the people who look up to us. A coach never stops learning. It's also disrespectful to God and the talent he's mm -hmm. given us. Yeah. Right. Because if, if we were born with this talent and this desire and this, you know, just inner, uh, you know, just beast to want to go out there and create things and add value and help people. I mean, where is the, <laughs> the goodwill and retiring and just chilling on the beach and doing nothing? 
Yeah. And pro once you stop progress in your life, like you die. Yeah. Like, dude, imagine this. I mean, my, my wife always says, if you treat something like it's the beginning, there'll never be an end. Yeah. Right. Like a marriage. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying like, once you're done making it new, once you're done keeping it fresh, once you're done making it fun, like it's done. Yeah. Your marriage is always you work. Up. You don't retire from your marriage. <laughs> Yeah, but the deal is, is that so many people, the reason why they don't have what they want anymore is because at one point they did have it. It was exciting. They don't have any variety anymore, which is what I call progress, continuing to study whatever it is that, you know, is important to you. And then it just becomes uh, civilized. Yeah. So you were just telling me about some interesting progress you've had lately, which is with your fitness. I mean, dude, you've put on freaking a lot of muscle and you know, you're telling me about your guy who you actually hired from Vegas. Mm -hmm. I used to work out with him unknowingly at the gym mm -hmm. and I don't look like you. So I should have, you know, been hitting this dude up while I was at the gym, but you know, you brought him into the fold yeah. and you and Jackie are now just in the best shape of your lives, even at 44. And now you guys are transforming the lives of your employees and your clients and everything else on the fitness side. Yeah. So think about this, right? Like when you leave the gym, like your goal is to obviously look different, right? Yeah. But even if you don't achieve that goal, like how do you feel? Feel great. Yeah. See, I'm in the sales space. So sales and leadership, I say two things. If you have sales and you have leadership, you can dominate the world. Mm. Those are the two missing things. And if you have sales and you don't have leadership, to me, you're screwed. So we're about making leaders. So me and Jacqueline, our goal, and that's my wife, me and Jacqueline's goal is I want to be a power couple for people because I am older. And I think everybody in this world is built for communion. Mm -hmm. including yourself. So yeah. like, if you look up to somebody, if they don't have a wife, then it just becomes some guy that you look up to that has some skill. But if he's got a wife and he takes good care of her and she's everywhere with him, you're like, damn, man, I really like this guy. Yeah. Like you'll like him more. And your wife will want you to like him because he respects his wife. And also dude, our children, when we're close, like they want to look up to us. My wife, when she was a mom, I'm not talking businesswoman here, CEO running. My wife runs the LA group. She's a CEO. She's a killer. When she was just mom, our kids looked at her like a slave. Mm. They did because she did everything for them. Once she got into business and me and her started getting in shape, dude, they started looking up to her like, see, she's freaking superwoman. Mm. You know, it's like, it's like, dude, like being our kids heroes, like what do superheroes look like? So my goal is I lead a team. Um, I know this. I'm in competition with a lot of other leaders in this world. I'm in competition with a lot of other influencers in this world. I'm in competition with social media and my team. So I want my team to look at me daily and go, damn, man, that guy's inspiring. Mm -hmm. So what was I missing? I got money. I got cars. I'm good to my team. I show them massive love. I'm good to my wife. I'm great to my children. I take my team to church every Sunday. I'm like, man, dude, I'm like physical, mental business. When we're physically fit, we mentally break records instead of breaking mentally and we crush it in business. I'm like, we got to get fit. Mm. And then I'm like, dude, but I don't want to think about it. Like a lot of people watching this, they want to get fit too, just like I did. And a lot of people go to the gym, but they don't change. Mm. And dude, if we studied business every day, but we never made any more money and our teams never grew, we would eventually get pissed off too. What would we do? Go hire a coach. That's right. why people train with you. That's why they buy your coaching packages because you show them the way to make more money. Well, I ran into this guy. His name's Aaron Williamson. And he's training, you know, trained The Rock. He was a part of Zac Efron's transformation. He, you know, Stallone, he trained all these guys. And I'm like, dude, okay, time out. So what exactly do you do? He says in 90 days between food and working out, okay? Yeah. You can totally recreate your whole body. I go at 44. Mm. He goes, yeah. I said, done. I'm all in. Like, I don't need to hear anymore. I'm an easy sell. I'm like sold. <laughs> yeah. And, and by the way, I noticed my wife was starting to get like big shoulders and arms because she's following me and I'm the leader. And I'm like screwing her because she wants a, a great ass. She wants a small, skinny waist. She wants to be sleek and fitness. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, man, like my wife's going to end up looking like me, which that's not a good thing. <laughs> right. No, because like because we're training together because me yeah. and my wife love to do everything together. So I said. I need to find somebody that can come train us. But I wanted to find somebody that when I look at with my eyes, like we look at people who are successful, I wanted to see somebody that had the body that I wanted or that looked like they were like I wanted to look like. And yeah. I was like, dude, this is it. So dude, in 60 days, just from eating clean, just from working out, just from listening to what he says, 
dude, our bodies have completely transformed. Mm. I mean, literally six pack, eight pack, feathering on the side. And I'm a businessman. I just want to walk in when I tell people that I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Like, I want to look the part. When I walk into a room, you know, nowadays, I mean, honestly, I'm not fat shaming anybody, but there's a lot of people that are out of shape. Yep. When a healthy person walks in the room and they've got a six pack and they're in shape, people stop and look. Yeah. Because it's uncommon. It's anymore. not hard to stand out. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the competition. I, well, so I'm like, dude, like, listen, I want to be the example for my team. Yeah. And also, dude, to be honest, like, I got to look in the mirror and me and you, we're, I mean, we're young, dude. Like, we could live to be 100. Yeah. Like, I want to be in great shape for a long time and I want to like me. Yeah. We talk about, like, love. Like, you got to love yourself to love other people. If you look in the mirror, Ryan, you like you, you're really good to your wife, you're good to your kids, you bring that special energy to everybody around you. But when you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, that was kind of my deal. I felt like David Goggins wrote a new book. It was called Never Finished, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was like, he, he said he got civilized. He said he was taking pictures. He was making money. He started realizing that he wasn't running these 100-mile marathons or 200-mile marathons anymore. And he's like, dude, you know, I'm not really who I say I am. So my, my deal is that I know somebody is always going to come after us and try to kick our ass. Right. Hey, I'm not worried about people taking customers and all that. Right. I'm just saying, what is going to be my next edge. So it's going to be fitness. Yep. So I'm going to keep growing and doing everything I'm doing. So I started doing the fitness dude. And I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Mm. You physically, when you go and you see your body changing, it's like building a business, Yeah. but it's building your body, dude. It changes everything. So nobody that, um, and by the way, discipline is how we get what we want in life, Yeah. but it just changed everything. So, um, yeah. And I've said it, I've said it on stage before too multiple times, but I said, Hey guys, you know, all the things you mentioned with spirit, faith, um, you know, health, mental, you know, obviously your money, all that stuff. You got to work on all of them. You can't mm -hmm. have any lacking. Cause if one is lacking, you're in trouble, right? Yeah. And relationships as well. Yeah. That's what the wealthy way is all about. But, uh, you know, for me, I've always said, look, if you're out of shape, you're not going to beat me in business. Mm -mm. There's no way you no. don't have the stamina. You don't have the mental clarity. Like you just can't. Well, and, and at the end of the day, like, what's what's your goal? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask a question, right? Okay, you've got children, yep. right? So anybody watching this right now, we're talking about what it does for business. What does it do for our kids when the parents stay in shape? I mean, I'm just going to ask a question, future reference. Do you want your kids to have heart disease when they grow up? Mm. Do you want your kids to have diseases that they get from eating crappy food, from being obese, from being over? Do you want your kids to be a part of that? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then dude, you have to lead the way for your children. Yeah. Okay. Like I think so many people like remember this. There's and, and let's say another one too, Ryan. You take on an, a, a a big amount of stress, mm -hmm. and you may say I'm stress free. Free. You take on projects like nothing else. You yeah. probably stack on way too many projects, way too often, all that. You know why? Because you love solving problems and you love the grind. What do you think that does to your heart when you put all these things on? You gotta have a healthy freaking heart. Yeah. So if you're gonna do big stuff, you're going to have to be internally healthy. Hey, the six pack and the great body and all that stuff. Like, man, that's just like that's icing. One thing. Yeah. yeah, that's like icing on the cake. The cake is the good heart. The cake is not getting dementia when we get older. Yeah. The cake is being, you know, freaking is feeding our stuff good, good stuff so our brains are operating right. And then the cake is when I die, I want my kids to see. I because we're not going to give our kids money. We'll give them money, but we're going to give them habits. Mm. I want my kids to get generational habits. The wealthy way, give your kids what you, they need to see in you. Your kids can't have what you don't have. Right. Okay. Like, so again, like you're in great shape. You take care of yourself. I want my kids to be healthy. I don't want my kids to freaking, you yeah. know. Well, and I'll tell you one other thing with that is I remember before Kobe died, he said a story about how, you know, he would get home from practice and games and everything else. And obviously he's had a long day mm -hmm. and his kids would want to go play with him. And they're like, dad, can you come play? And he started to talk about it. And he said, you know, I could make every excuse in the book and everything else to say, hey, I got to rest for tomorrow, whatever. But he said, you know what? Like, I need to go play with him. Right. And he, he was just talking about, I mean, the mental you know, the Mamba mindset to go do that, but also too having the actual physical strength to do it because mm -hmm. there are guys who come home from work after just even a nine to five mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, they sit on the couch and they're like, I'm out. I'm mm -hmm. a couch potato. I'm done. And it's because they're just, they don't have it physically. And so for me, you know, when I come home from work, 
you know, my kids are like, they're, they're now old enough and they're swimming and stuff. And they're like, Dada, we want to go swimming. And I'm mm -hmm. like, let's go. You know, I don't care that I've, you know, worked all day doing my thing. I don't care that I haven't had any time off yet. Yeah. Let's go swim because I feel great. Yeah. And by the way, that's just called not being one dimensional. Mm. And as I learn, look, we all have teachers. My wife's taught me a couple of things. Number one, be where your feet are. It means if you're going to kick ass at work, go kick ass at work. But when you come home, now you're at home. You're walking into a new environment, right? Yep. So like you got to be there with your family, right? They've been waiting on you all day. Yeah. Okay. We're going to give them leftovers. We're going to go home, put on a show worth paying for for them too. Mm. Right. And then also, um, you know, like one dimensional again, people have, we've had leaders. They say, well, you can't, you know, you, you can't have a great marriage and make a lot of money. You got to choose one or the other. Dude, you can have a great marriage. Yeah. Also, you can be in great shape. I know a lot of people that are like, hey, man, I'm going to get really healthy, and then I'm going to get on the yacht when I get older, and work, or I'm going to make a lot of money, then I'm going to get healthy. No, you're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And, and matter of fact, I'm watching a lot of people right now die at 40 and 50 years old yep. that are in entrepreneurship, yep. and they're dying with a heart attack. They're dying with stroke. Dude, listen, if you don't take care of yourself, all you're doing is going to make all this money, and someone else is going to raise your family after you're gone. Ooh. Yeah, like... I'm just saying that's, it's the no, truth. But no, you're not wrong. And that's what I love about you is, you know, you, you used the word real earlier a lot. And it's like, you're real. And that's why you're blowing up is because you're saying things people don't want to hear. You know, you were telling my producer just now, you're like, hey, you're not in shape. And he's like, you know, but it's true. He's not. He's got to fix it. And he would love being in shape. Yeah. Which is what's crazy. Sometimes we just need someone to piss us off. Yep. Um, I, I might have told you the story before, but whenever I was in 2019, when I really transformed my life and I started my own business and I really took off, my wife did the best thing that she could ever do. She reached over, she grabbed my love handles because <laughs> I had them at that time. And yeah. she goes, she said that she was, you getting a little comfortable? <laughs> and when she said, you're getting a little comfortable, I remember that it wasn't funny. Yeah. Like it was, it's, yeah, it was you're like, war. Yeah. You know what I'm, I mean? I'm not, I mean, yeah. I was, I was, but you know what? She was right. I did get comfortable. And you know what? Our abundance mindset, we can have it all. I had people steal that from me along the way and say, Hey man, you're 39 years old. You're doing better than most in this. And dude, like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're a leader. And by the way, everybody watching this, when they listen to these podcasts with you, they should aspire to become what you're talking about. They should aspire to become the greatest. Like you're a coach and you want your people that you coach to become greater than you. Yeah. That's how, that's what, that's our legacy. You know, the mama mentality, Kobe, right? Like he didn't want people to try to be as good as him. He wanted to make people better than him, dude. Like he changed so many lives and so many people's lives. And I know that, you know, when you run into people everywhere you go, people are like, oh my God, Ryan Panita. And they would say, you changed my life. Yeah. They say, you changed my life. Best feeling in the world, man. Mm -hmm. Heaven yeah. on earth. So my goal is we're fighting for people's attention right now. And you got freaking people that are going home. They're sitting on the couch. I think we tell them, dude, listen, you get off that couch. You start busting your ass. You get in good shape. I promise you the wealth that yep. you're really wanting. I bet it can happen in this next year and you don't have to wait. Why wouldn't we compress time frames and get healthy? But, I, but I'll tell you why also we're blown up is because most people are really settling once they make just enough. Yeah. And I just want to keep pushing that bar. And that's why like every time I see, you know, the, the reels, they're always growing and there's a lot of new guys coming up in the space. Yeah. I mean, it's, and I love seeing it. Yeah. And then a lot of the guys are, and by the way, I'm going to say something. There's a guy that I know about right now who's a badass. He's a, he's, and I won't say his name, but he's, he's an animal, but he's already got everything that he wants. Hmm. And since he's got everything that he wants, now he's in a routine and it seems like he's dwindling down and going backwards. Mm. The only way to coast is down. Our goal is that, Ryan, if you feel like financially you ever fulfill your dreams, if you don't find something else to find progress in, you're going to go backwards. Yeah. And that mag magical, magnetic man, that person that everybody looked up to, he'll slowly disappear and everybody else will find someone else. Right. I don't want to go out like that, man. Yeah. You know, like you said, God gave us one life. I'm going to go hard. Um, also renewing your mindset. When you watch podcasts like this, like your goal is to steal the way that people think. Like when I'm with you, I literally just listen and I listen to the way you think. And my goal is to steal the way that you think because mm. I need that. My brain, I have, my heart is great. 
But my brain, I need to figure out different ways to think. And you think differently than me. Bradley thinks differently than me. Yeah. Keaton thinks differently than me. Ed Milet thinks differently. Andy Frizzella. Th- I, I want to learn how everybody thinks so I can also take that. Your brain is made for so much, man. And I really think this last year that that's what I've done is that I haven't envied anybody. I've emulated things that make a big difference. Yeah. And that's you know, the big key, right? People can watch and hate or be jealous or anything. But that's that's the thing that stuck out to me when we first met was you're already ultra successful and you're trying to continue to learn, improve, and find any new edge that you don't currently have. So, self-development, man. Self-development. I'm telling you, dude, it's self-development. I swear on my life. Like, yeah. that's the game. Whoever's going to play the game of self-development is going to kick everybody's ass. Yep. No, a thousand percent. And, and execute. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, how many people do you know self-develop with you, but they don't execute? Yeah. You're out. Yeah. But if you self-develop and you execute, you will crush everybody. Dude. And by the way, I'm going to say this. It's the, it's the, it's amateur hour Mm. all around the world. Dude, listen, if you'll out carry your competition and if you'll train, you'll smoke everybody. Yeah. I mean, it's amateur hour. Yeah. Dude, if you listen to the way that people answer phone calls in a business, if you look at the way that people don't do follow up anymore, if you look at the way that people just don't care anymore they do what they're paid to do and nothing more and by the way that's the leader's fault wealth builders if you are trying to grow your real estate investing business then you need to join us at wealthy investor you have no idea what wealthy investor is it is our coaching program and community we have helped thousands of students worldwide grow their business now it doesn't matter if you're just getting started and you're trying to get that first deal we can help you do that if you're trying to scale your business and go from a few deals a year to a few deals a month or even seven figures a year we can help you do that too in fact last year alone we had over 30 students do over a million dollars in revenue and i'd love for you to be the next one so it's pretty simple if you're trying to grow your business and wholesale more homes or flip more homes or buy more rental properties then you need to go to wealthyinvestor.com and book a free call with our team. It's super simple. We'll go on a strategy call with you and figure out how we can help you grow according to your needs. So all you got to do is go to wealthyinvestor.com, book the free call with the team, and we'll see you there. You've built your career in sales. I know mm-hmm. we're talking a lot about self-development, and that's a prerequisite mm-hmm. to go do your job well. Mm-hmm. But the craft that you're teaching and what's gotten your business to where it is today is sales. Sales, absolutely. And you know, you started off as a car sales guy mm-hmm. and you've transitioned now to doing sales for solar, insurance, yeah. just everything. Just communicating. Yeah. Dude, so what we do, Ryan, let's say that let's say that I was going to coach you, right? Yep. So anybody listening to this right now, like you could grab a pen, piece of paper and write down a couple of things. Number one, I want you to write down the word image. Okay. I want you to understand that you need to understand that your image plays a big part of sales. Mm-hmm. If you're face to face sales, if you don't look like somebody, I said, look, if you don't look like somebody that I'd want to invest my money in, I'm not going to invest my money in you. Right. If you don't look like somebody that I want to spend my money with, I'm not going to spend my money with you. If I walked in, I had a million dollars to invest today and I walked in and I looked at you and I didn't even hear you yet, but I looked at you and I didn't believe in you by the look at you. I'm out. Right. Okay. But people need to wake up and realize that people have eyeballs. Right. And they are judging you before you even open your mouth. Mm hmm. Okay, how many people do you see looking sloppy nowadays? Yep. Way too many. Too many. So so number one, write down image because you need to have an image coach, okay? Which is why I care about fitness, all right? But one thing I want to say before yes, you sir. continue is, you know, when you were presenting at WealthCon, you, it, it was one of the best presentations I've ever seen. But one thing you did was, you know, you made everyone stand up and they continued to stand for quite a while. Um, and, you know, you let them sit and you said, guys, get out your notebook right now because we're going to take notes. And somebody didn't take out their notebook mm-hmm. and you went in on them. You're like, hey, why are you even here? If you don't want to take notes, what are you doing here? And I was like, dang, dude, Andy does not play. Well, because you made a commitment to yourself, you're going to come out here and grow. And I'm just curious where you broke that commitment. Yeah. Like, like you just got here. Like, how did we break it that quick? Did you forget the promise you made to yourself? And by the way, that's what a good coach does. Yeah. Because Kobe Bryant was made by his NBA coach, his own practice. And also Tim Grover poked holes in him all day long. Poke, yep. poke, 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 poke. His, he pissed him off sometimes. Hey, that person that I talked to, I bet they took notes after that. Right. You know, I'd rather hate me and get better than like me and stay the same. Right. You know, you've heard Goggins say that a million times. Mm-hmm. So um, he tells people the truth, right? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, so, but image though, image is everything. Also speaking, Ryan, 
Think about this. How many people do you shake hands with all the time? And they're like, oh my God, Ryan. And mm -hmm. when you talk to them, they don't know how to communicate to you. Right. Okay, so let's just get this out of the way. So you're obviously like in real estate. So you speak to people for a living. And I'm not saying everybody that follows you is in real estate, but a lot of them are entrepreneurs. They do do businesses. They have their own businesses. They look up to you. You know, they find their way. Ryan, these people speak to people for a living. Right. Don't you think when they come and meet you, the, the, the mentor, the man they've been wanting to meet, that they would communicate with you in such a way? You'd be like, damn, man, <laughs> who are you? Right. Damn, I did do a good job training you. Yep. No, they can't even communicate. Mm -hmm. You can't even speak to me. You don't even look at me in the eyes when you talk to me. You can't even shake my hand with all fingers in your thumb and shake it. You don't even hold my hand and look at me in the eyes and get my name out of your mouth before you even let go of my hand. Mm. Dude, your posture while you're shaking me, you're all poopy pants and your shoulders are hanging down. <laughs> Come on, man. Snap out of it. Dude, this could be the million dollar handshake. Yeah. Again, image speaking. Everybody's a public speaker. Whether you speak to one person or 10,000 people, people got to want to hear you speak. So I think that if you're in any business, I think that you need to learn how to use wordplay. I think that it's all about presentation. The way you present it is the way people perceive it. I think that the, you, the way you use your words, you could literally change up a sentence two or three different ways, and it could allow somebody to move forward and advance forward or back up. Okay. I believe that as a, as a, communicate we're going to call it a master communicator okay being a speaker yep. your job is to make it easy to say yes to hard to say no to and make it the client's idea every single time dude also i want to say something if you're in the real estate space do you sound like every freaking other real estate person out there i mean do you sound the same like why should i even use you if you're all the same mm -hmm. so if you want to really be different you got to learn how to paint pictures tell stories sell situations and sell ideas mm. And Just, the same, and same is true. Not even, I mean, we're talking about customers and potential clients and leads, but sales, leadership, your image, that's how you attract talent too. That's mm -hmm. how you get your employees and the partners and the people. Like I can tell this, you're not going to go and partner with somebody who can't, you know, fit your standard, mm -mm. right? Like you're like, dude, you're sloppy. Why would I partner with you? That's right. You know? Yeah, so so I'm telling you, and by the way, the word standard, we should just, people don't always get their goals, but they always get their standards. The yep. word standard is probably the most important thing here. Whatever your standard is, is what you'll get. Right. So if you, we teach people image, we teach them communication, speaking, and then we teach them sales. To me, sales is a simple five by five program. It's this. So if I'm in sales, if it's the interest rate, objection, like in real estate, people are saying the interest rate's too high, right? Yep. Cool. So it'd be like, hey, Ryan, I totally understand the rate's a little high. However, you know, six to nine months ago, if you were to look at the same property, you would have been in a bidding war with somebody else and probably spent an additional $300,000. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now you would have had to put an additional $300,000 down when you bought the house because the loan to value would have probably been the same except for now it's a bidding war. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you wouldn't want to do that, would you? Nope. However, today, there's never been a better time in the history of the world for a consumer like yourself to make a deal on a property like this to buy it right. But the interest rate's a little higher today. Ryan, you date the rate, you marry the payoff. You know what that means? You date the rate when the feds lower them, you get a better one, you refinance it, abracadabra. But guess what? Had you bought a house eight months ago, you would have had a higher payoff. Dude, it would have been a 300 grand higher payoff with the little better interest rate. What would have made you more happy, Ryan? Paying 300 more grand for the house with a little better of a rate or having a lower payoff today but having to pay a little higher rate that you can refinance when the feds drop the rate, which they could do any day now. Which yeah. one would you rather do? Date the rate, marry the payoff. Sign here. Let's roll, buddy. Mm. You know, like, dude, like, what does your language sound like? And by the way, do I look like I'm thinking about what to say as I'm talking to you? Nope. No. You're not even a real estate guy. No, because we're snipers. Yeah. We, look, Ryan, if I had a piece of paper right now and I said, write down the top five objections that every real estate person gets. Yep. They know what they are. Mm-hmm. Dude, if, if, if somebody walked up to you right now, Ryan, think about this. If somebody walked up to anybody and walked up to them and literally slapped them across the face, dude, that would be like, what? That's a shocker. You're like, yeah. what the hell? What if they walked up to you again? You'd be like, dude, there's no way in hell I'm going to let this guy slap me again. Yep. I see sales reps get hit every single day with the same objections and they never learn how to handle it. They just keep folding. You just keep getting slapped. <laughs> it's like they just keep getting slapped. Why? Mm -hmm. To me, we haven't set the standard high enough. We don't train on it. A lot of people, they underestimate the amount of training that it's going to make to become wealthy. Yeah. 
Like truthfully, like, dude, listen, whoever's willing to put the work in, who's ever willing, you know what I would tell anybody to do? You want to really make it? Take the next year, go home, pull your TV down, mm. go pull it off the wall, replace them with whiteboards, mm. get a vision board. I want you to write down everything that's important to you in your life. And I want you to find a picture of, I want you to put it on the board. And it's almost like going into em enemy territory and going to war, right? You ever seen how they go in there and there's yarn everywhere yep. and they're, I want you to start taking out one thing at a time and use all your sacrifice, use all your discipline, you know, use everything. The difference between poor people and rich people are resourcefulness. Rich people are very resourceful. If you want to get something done, you're going to figure out how to get it done. Poor yeah. people, they just don't figure it out. And the reason why is because they don't use resources. And right now, like, dude, if I just watch your stuff every day, all day for about a week, I literally could reinvent myself. Mm. I mean, it doesn't matter how old I am. I right. could literally reinvent myself and I could steal your identity for me for at least for a while until I would alter into who I'm going to become. Right. That's where did you, where did you learn all of these concepts we're talking about? Right. Because a lot of guys will look at you and they'll be like, Oh yeah, Andy is a sales trainer who, who knew you before. Right. And I think that a lot of people probably watching you on social media now are like, I don't even know what Andy does, but he's like, he's got really good stuff, dude. His mindset is right on point. You know, he's getting me hyped up. Um, he's getting, he's calling me out for what I am. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of your contents, it's like what we're talking about now. It's like just stuff that's, we, we all need to hear and do like, where did you learn these things we're talking about? Well, so I was that guy. I tell everybody, I am you, you are me. I got triggered every freaking day when I was younger. I look back and I think now in my life, all the things that took me out, like for real, that took me out. All the times that I was going to kill it, and then literally I let something eat me alive. Mm. Dude, all the times that I broke mentally that I should have pushed through and I probably could have become something great, those times that I broke and caved, all those times I weren't in my best shape. Right. Dude, for me, when my wife grabbed my left hand handles, she didn't want me to have a six-pack. She knew that in order for me as her husband who, when we were in shape in our, our young 20s, I played an elite game being in great shape. But now that I was trying to play the elite husband, I was trying to be the elite dad, the elite you know businessman, and I also had to look in the mirror and like me, I was living in an alien's body. Mm. That wasn't me, dude. I had lost my edge. Mm. So she did it to piss me off. Why did she, you lose your edge? Dude, because I got comfortable, man. I mean, dude, you know, you, you go and put a couple million cash in the bank. Yep. Okay. Um, and you go and, you know, you're just, your house is paid off. You got a couple nice cars. Yep. Dude, you just get freaking comfortable, man. It, listen, it's the death of you, dude. And that, oh, and by the way, that's why I have some rules in my house because I know my kryptonite. Okay, number one, my wife doesn't talk to me about how much money we have. We don't, she doesn't talk to me about none of that stuff. I am sheltered from anything that will remove this chip off my shoulder. Mm. Um, I need to go back to zero every day. Um, Ryan, when your back's against the wall, just envision this phone call right now. Your wife calls you and goes, Ryan, if we don't make $400,000 by Sunday night, we're going to be, we're going to be kicked out of our house. Mm. Something triggers immediately in you, right? This is your most dangerous asset. It's mm -hmm. called when your back's against the wall. I need to keep my back against the wall. I need to. Yeah. When my back's not against the wall, I don't play my best. A lot of people can only play their best when they don't have any pressure. Pressure makes me dangerous. When you throw me, so in my events, we'll have five, 600 people that, you know, that's about roughly how many will hold in Scottsdale at our event. Yep. And we do them twice a month. I'll go in the middle of the room. Anybody in the room can hit me with any objection and I will bury it on the spot. I don't know what they're going to say. I have no clue. And with seconds, yeah. I can nail it. Why? Back against the wall. Mm. Okay. And, how, and what happens? When you fall to your, when your back's against the wall, you fall to your lowest level of skill. Can you take your, your gun apart in the dark when you're in the military? Well, you better or they're not going to let you go to war. Right. We should be able to do this with our mind. Um, we should be able to do this with our skill. So you said, how did I learn all these concepts? Easy. I went back and replayed every time I freaking broke, every time, dude, and every time that I got my ass kicked, I was out of shape. Mm. Every time I got my ass kicked, I was hanging out with somebody I shouldn't have been hanging out with. Mm. 
Okay. Every time I got my ass kicked, I didn't discuss something with my wife and I made a decision without her. Mm. You know, you've done it before, yeah, dude. And yeah. you thought, God, and your wife's like, dude, why did you do that with him? And you're like, <laughs> and my wife's like, don't think for me. Yeah. She's like, don't think for me. Come talk to me. By the way, like I've learned my wife wants to protect me. She tells me no a lot. Right. And why she tells me no is because she, she's trying to protect me. She wants me to do good. So at times I didn't involve my wife, but then also times I stopped studying. Mm. Dude, every time I stopped studying, you know what I did? I went backwards yeah. because nothing stays the same. Also finding new mentors. This is super important. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't be with you till they die. Listen, you keep changing. You keep growing. People are never going to outgrow you because mm -hmm. you don't ever stop changing. Yeah. But so many mentors, they're good for a year. They stop growing. Dude, you, you learn from them, move on. If you've stopped growing, move on. Now, listen, if you're complaining and you're saying that, oh, I need to find somebody else, but you're not doing the work they taught you. Hey, that's your fault. Yeah. But dude, guys like me and you, like we're never going to stop evolving. Yeah. And anybody and everybody that we know that's doing something amazing, we study it, we learn it, we bring it into our business. We're early adopters. Right. You know, but we're always but, trying new things. Yeah, dude, we're not afraid. You know, we're building AI into our business hard right now. And, you know, like like a lot of people are like, well, what if it does this? Shut up, man. <laughs> dude, what if it's the greatest thing that ever existed and you get in late and it costs you four times as much? Yeah. Right? Like, no ways, man. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna take every risk in the world. And guess what, dude? I'm not afraid to go broke. Yeah. I'm really not, dude. Wasn't it? I remember you saying one time that you were broke not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Like, something happened dude i'm gonna tell and this is a big one for anybody watching this because you tell people a lot of the times to invest and a lot of the times it's not like people invest out of their abundance people invest with their last dollar yeah would you agree yeah okay hey, hey you got to where you got by investing your last dollar had to max out credit cards had to do everything okay so you teach people no risk no story yep i want you to think about something how many people right now right they're just going to invest and they're using all the money they got. And as soon as they do, they start complaining to their family about the risk they took. Hey mom, you know, I had to sell my car because I've been watching this guy, Ryan, and he's telling me I need to do investments. They're looking for pity. Mm. They're looking for somebody to feel sorry for them. You're never going to make it. And by the way, guess what? We in 2019 in November, this is in November of 2019. I quit my job. Mm. I started my business and, um, we, my wife, I remember I always say, take your wife with you. Yeah. I asked my wife to support me and never let me go back and work for anybody again. What were you doing as a job? Um, I was a general manager. Okay. Yeah. I was a general manager of a car dealership. I was making about two and a half million a year. Mm. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you my kryptonite. Okay. Betrayal. Mm. I hate being betrayed. Ryan, I'm going to tell you this. You know what I mean? You've yeah. got friends right now that you're not worried about them betraying you. Yep. You've got some people on your team that you're not ever worried. Your wife, you don't question where she at, what room she in, it, what men she's around. You, you know her. You know her. Mm -hmm. And you love that peace that that gives you. Yep. I had peace in a company that I was going to be all right forever. I built a massive team. And money made, money paid is how salespeople operate. In case anybody, the le leader's listening to this, I'm going to explain how this works. Money made, money paid. If I tell you I'm going to pay you 2%, Ryan, yep. and you put up $100 million or you put up a million, 2% of whatever you put up is 2%. Yep. But if you were making you know, $10 million and then you go put up 2%, $100 million, I couldn't say, well, Ryan, <laughs> I mean, man, I didn't know you were going to put up a hundred million. Yeah. So like, I can't pay you 2%. I mean, that's too much. I've never paid anybody. Dude, I just made you that much. <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't, you didn't pay me more. I made you more and then <laughs> I got paid more. Yeah. People have a very hard time when they see the checks get bigger and they forget who's helping them build their business. Right. And a guy said, I can't pay you that much money anymore. So I was, I was betrayed. Yeah. So I quit. And the next day they always call you back and say, ah, oh, we decided we're going to pay it to you. I'm out. I made a deal with my wife. I said, don't ever let me go back. Mm. Don't you ever let me go back. And, uh, and she made that commitment to me and she knew that it was going to be a tough year yep. because I'm starting entrepreneurship, which anybody that's starting this journey, the build is the bitch. Yep. You, you know this, man. That first year getting you up, maxing your credit cards, doing all this. Dude, that was a, that was a horrible year. Yeah. 
But that suffering brought you and your wife so close together. Yep. Guess what? Me and my wife, same deal. We sold our million dollar house in Oklahoma. We went and lived in a 1200 square foot place. We literally slept on mattresses on the floor. We sold all of our furniture and we intentionally hear, hear the word. We intentionally stepped back. Nobody knew this, Ryan. Nobody knew we sold our house. We just didn't post our house on social media. Anymore. <laughs> um, nobody knew that we had sacrificed like this. We didn't tell anybody. We didn't tell our family. We didn't want anybody to feel sorry for us. We built our business and executed. We spent all of our money on training, all of our money investing, all of our money doing this stuff. And guess what? Now today, I can tell you about that story where we slept on mattresses. I think people complain and talk about their sacrifices way too early. And I think that's the reason why they don't make it because now you got your whole family saying, why would you give up your job? Why did you do that? Well, you're the one that made them not support you because you complained. Mm. If you really want a Ryan Pineda story, if you really want to be teaching the wealthy way, dude, you got to learn that you're going to suffer. You're going to have to have discipline and you're going to have to work through the build. Yeah. And the build is a bitch. Yep. But enjoy the journey yep. because I told you there's people right now that the journey isn't going on anymore because they've already made it. And those people are going backwards and they're dying. The journey is the most beautiful part of it all. Yep. Now the journey, I can tell you complacency is something I've struggled with too, because, you know, I don't know about you growing up, but you know, I didn't envision like, oh, just making all these millions of dollars in business and doing this and that. And then, you know, you do it and you're like, man, like, pretty good. Yeah. You know, and having to, having the mental, I don't want to say tricking yourself, but into tricking but it yourself is a trick. back to get yeah. you back against the wall to do it. Dude, it is a trick. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you my wife, I explained to her, by the way, I want to tell you something with my wife. So everybody keeps hearing me say my word, my wife, but I just want to say this. Um, I need my wife to understand the way that my brain operates better than anybody else. Mm hmm. So anything that I'm thinking or anything that goes on, I know my wife don't judge me. She knows I'm crazy as shit. <laughs> so like, she's not worried about it. But I, but I need her to know because whenever I'm not producing how I should, it's because something shifted inside of my head. Right. It's not because my skills backed up. It's not because something's changed in my leadership game. I'm a sharp, something's changed. My perspective, your perspective is everything, right? Right. Look, dude, if you think people are trying to offend you, then you're going to get offended all day long. Right. But if you think everybody in this world just loves you, you're looking for love all day long. Mm. It's like eyes and perspective is everything. So I tell my wife, I say, listen to me, I need to stay stirred up nonstop. I need to have controlled anger. I call it controlled anger. Listen, I love love. I do everything out of love, but I need to stay stirred up. That's my freaking edge. Mm. And um, you said you got to keep your edge. So my edge is... I want to put my back against the wall in any way, shape or form. I like, I like that, that peacefulness of knowing that, you know, we're, we're, we're in a good place, but also I like that edge knowing that I could lose it all again tomorrow. Right. Um, and a lot of people are like, dude, why would you want to think that way? Because it makes me ensure that I don't get complacent. Right. It makes me ensure, you know, that somebody, cause I was making a joke with somebody the other day and I, they, me and my wife, we have sex every day and I talk about it all the time. I mm. said, 44, I have sex all the day. I'm like, I don't, that another reason why I stay fit because <laughs> when we're working out together at the end of the day, we want to go have sex together. Right. Mm. But dude, what, whatever you don't take care of, like someone else is going to take care of. Mm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not being weird. I'm like, dude, don't be a good dad to your kids. Someone else is going to mentor them. Mm. or her yeah you know don't take care of your employees just disappear and go enjoy your money one day you'll <laughs> look up and you'll have to start over again because your whole team went and worked for somebody else that they feel a part of their they're a part of the big picture and the journey right like dude like everybody's replaceable yep um so am i yep. so and and you are too and so um, my deal is is that i just want to stay sharp and i feel like i stay sharp whenever i feel like um, my back's against the wall, not broke, but back against the wall. Yeah. I think too, with, when it comes to being a leader, cause that's what we're talking about, whether it's your household, your business, your kids, right? A good leader is always casting vision. Mm -hmm. They're always striving for more. You know, the moment you hear a leader or a CEO or someone say, Hey, you know, we're good guys. Let's mm -hmm. just, um, cut expenses. Let's stop growing. Let's try and just get more profitable and yeah. you know, we're good right here. 
that that that's the sign that like, oh man, I need to get out of here. Like there's no more room for me to grow. Yeah. And you should have these employees and partners, everyone who else wants to grow with you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I don't know who said it, but you can only attract the level of talent to which you are, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're never going to go get somebody who's better than you and right. like wanting to strive. Why would they join you? They're going to go and join somebody else. That's it. And, you know, you, you always hear me talk about, like, I say, you know, I say this jokingly, but I mean this. I say, if you can recruit somebody on my team, I'll give you 10 million cash mm. because come after me, come after one of my guys. Cause they don't work for money. Mm. They don't work for compensation. Okay. What they work for is what we've built and what we built. I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's a circle of, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a circle of safety. Okay. Everybody, when you go and you cut pay plans in your company, you know what it tells everybody? It tells everybody that shit's changing. Yeah. And by the way, things are always changing. Yeah, they are. Okay. But how about this? If you, and by the way, you, we're, we're going to look at two lives here. And by the way, every leader has to choose their life. Number one, overpay your people, overpay your people mm -hmm. and never worry about them leaving. Yep. Or number two, keep money from them. Okay. And, and maybe they're not worth it, but guess what? Be prepared to replace them and retrain people every year. Yeah. If your goal is to physically walk out of your business and walk out of it yeah. and let everything operate, guess what? Overpay your people. Mm -hmm. I pay my guys 30% commission. I've said this all the time. You can't, nobody can come work for me unless they've been through multiple of my training programs. Yeah. Are people that say, Andy, how do I get a job with you? It's very simple. Come to a seminar, come to a training Go home after the seminar. Show me you've changed. Put in the work that I've taught you. Show me you're a product of the product. Yep. Show me. Yeah. Well, I don't want to do all that. You don't understand how good I am. I'm the best at what I do. You're not like me though right now because I don't, you don't train with me. You don't know what I teach my team. I don't want you on the phone with my people. I want my people that are with me literally, um, the identical things as my content. Yeah, they need to be disciples. Yeah, disciples. Man, nailed it. Yep. And and if you're not disciples of it, I'm not interested in the money. Yeah. I'm interested in the people that believe in me, that reach out to me, being talked to, at least if they can't get a hold of me, by somebody who has the same core values as me, that believes as me, who had the same transformation and, and change from the same training. I want that. Yeah. But anyway, so that's on that deal. But I pay my guys 30%. Now listen. This is crazy because everybody goes, dude, you can't pay him, pay him 6%, pay him 10%. Don't pay him on reoccurring. You know what? I pay him and I pay him and I pay him. And you know what? I've been traveling for the last year. We've been on the road nonstop from events to speaking to all this stuff to build this brand. Because my, I told my wife, I go, the next year, year and a half, I want to build our brand. That was our goal. That's why we're growing because I, whatever you- It was intentional. Yeah, it was intentional. You know, I haven't been home. My team is at home. Mm -hmm. My team is at home. And when I leave, it's like I didn't even leave. They're the same as me. Yeah. They're the same. Most people never get a chance to recreate themselves because they just are worried about how much money their people are going to make. Everything comes down to money. The worst leaders make decisions based off money. Mm. Okay. So our goal is, is that Ryan... I don't know what every leader's goal is, but my goal isn't to make the most money. My goal is to create the best team in the world because that's what I do for other companies. Yeah. And I want them to know, hey, if they're the same, what's the difference between you and this other sales trainer? I say, come look at my team. Yeah. Do you want a team like I have? You can have one like I have because that's my team. And that's how you know I can build you a great team because I have a great team. Mm. But I can leave. And so that's kind of what I want you to know. It's like if you're to have a nanny that's going to watch your kids, so you and your wife can go to be together, you would want this nanny to mirror what your what your wife does. Right. She would need to be a second mom to your children. Mm. So my my team at home is a second Andy Elliott. They believe the same way. They act the same way. They have the same motivation. They work out the same. They train the same. They do everything the same. And by the way, it's not because they're me. They're just disciples. And I don't call it disciples of like Jesus of a person. It's disciples of the content. Yeah, the what, philosophy. Yeah, the philosophy. What we preach, we yeah. live. Yeah. And my favorite term, and I'll say this, is I say, don't be a fraud. Okay, I tell my team every day, don't be a fraud. Okay, if you're going to tell people that they can go have a great life, you're going to have a great one. If you didn't tell people that they can go out and grow every day and change and keep recreating, you're going to recreate every day. Don't be a fraud. Mm. 
Okay. So my biggest deal is that, you know, you'll see me take people's shirts off on stage and play around and stuff. What I'm doing is that I'm trying to tell people that listen to me, like your discipline levels of what you're going after in life is also an example of your body as well. Yeah. And Hey, I'm not telling you have to be in great shape, but I will tell you, your kids are watching. I would tell you that it would be cool if your wife or husband admired you. And well, you were, well, you are saying you won't, they won't work for you. if They're not in good shape. Yeah, and well, number one, because I want to be around people that also inspire me. Like Ryan, yeah. I, I want to say something. If you're a leader, like here, like also, you want to walk into the, your office, and like, isn't it cool when your team like is doing stuff like at such a high level yeah. that it also like feeds you? Yeah. Like you can't just be the feeder system for your people every day, even though that is your job. But like, isn't it cool when they feed you also? Yeah. Like I tell my team, I'm like, guys, like. Don't just be freaking consumers. Yeah. Like be contribute. Let me walk into the office and feel the energy from you guys. Let me walk in the office and like, maybe I'm having a bad day and you guys turn me around. Yeah. Right. Like that's what I want. Like that's what I need you guys to do. Yeah. And so we do it for each other and we kind of hold this like, like we hold the line together. Yeah. And by the way, I want to say something about my wife. This is super important. My wife isn't my queen. She's my battle mate. We battle life together it's me and her against the world me and my team they're my warriors mm. that's why i call them warriors because we are going against the mediocrity we're going against everything we're doing shit that nobody said that we can do just like you how we're staying close together we're keeping the weak ones out we're not getting civilized we're not conforming you know yeah um so let's talk about this like obviously your team is i mean they're an army right? They're literally called the Elliott army, right? Mm -hmm. And you said last time you were here, you had 15 and it's become a hundred. Now, my thing is at least in sales, because I assume a lot of those are sales guys. Every right? one of them is a sales. Every one of them. Sales Nobody guy. works in my company who doesn't sell. Okay. So for me, one thing I found difficult is like obviously building a sales team, like you mm -hmm. said, but then just like the constant turnover of not even that, like just getting rid of just like, Hey, you're not, you're not up to standard, right? You got to go. Yeah. Like how is that go with you guys? Cause not everyone you bring in is working out. So it's, it's, I've lost probably six people in four years. Mm. So my sales turnover, um, higher slow. Okay. But also I fire slow. Okay. Okay. So listen, I want to explain something to you. If I hire you, like, I must not be coaching you right. Like I have a really hard, my, everybody in my company, I've got two or three guys that I am slowly pulling their revenue up every month that are just slow learners, man. But dude, their hearts are so good, man. Yeah. Dude, their, their minds, they're so thoughtful. They're doing the work. They're showing up every day. They're, they're changing in their body transformation. They're loving to customers. They out care everybody. Their revs just coming up slow. Yeah. You know what? One day it's going to click. I'll, I'm with them. Yeah. Dude, if they're loyal to me, I'm going to be honest, dude. When I was 18, I stuttered. I didn't know how to speak. I was trailer trash. I'm just being for real. I was a yeah. loser. I was a straight freaking loser. You know, I mean, just like loser. Like I was a physical loser, man. I didn't mm -hmm. want to be a loser. I just only was around losers. So like, I, my first manager could have either believed in me or not believed in me. Mm. And my first manager believed in me. And from 18 to 19 years old, he made me into a great salesman. And he believed in me. When I met my wife, my wife saw a man in me that I didn't know existed. And she believed in me. And nobody in the world would have this guy without her belief. Mm -hmm. Every time I've had a breakthrough, it's because someone believed in me and they didn't stop. Dude, my wife spent five years trying to turn me from a kid into a man. Mm. She could have bolted early. Okay. I married up. Why can't I give anybody else a little bit of slack? Right. Now, look, hey, if they're negative, if they don't care, if I feel like they're going to betray me, if they're not trying... Like, that's different. But like, dude, I was just a slow learner, dude. Yeah. Well, I guess what I'm getting at too is, so you're hiring from within your program. Yes. And so, that's what I want to tell you. Like, it's a yeah, whole different it's deal. It's a different thing because you've trained them. You know who's legit. Cause yeah. Because I've hired people from my program. Yes. They're the best because I'm cherry picking. I'm like, yo, we need to do something together. Yes, exactly. And they're my best people. Yes. 
And so the fact that you can just well, pick, you're their mentor, and they come work for their mentor. That's their dream. Yeah. You know, so what I learned is this. Um, number one, if you want loyal people, if you want loyalty, find somebody that grew up without it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll ask you, I'll say, hey, Ryan, so tell me about your life growing up. Oh, man, nothing. It was amazing, dude. Mom and dad had lots of money. You know, cool. What kind of car did you get when you were 16? Oh, I got a freaking, you know, a G550 wagon. <laughs> I'm like, listen, dude, they're not going to grind with you. Yeah. Look, when shit gets hard, dude, they're the first to roll out. Yeah. Once Big, D Big Daddy over here comes and offers them more money, mm -hmm. dude, they're going to leave you, man. They're, they're not going to do this with you. They're not going to suffer with you. They're going to call your brother to your face and they're going to leave yeah. one night when you when everybody's out of work and they're going to pack their shit. And they're not even going to tell you that they quit to your face. They're going to do it by text message. Mm -hmm. I'm out. Yeah. I want to go find people. See, I, I didn't have a lot of love as a kid. So as I'm older, I want to give people a lot of love. So I want to find people. I want to find people that honestly didn't have a lot of love as a kid. Now, yeah. I'm not I'm not telling you I don't want you to have great parents. I'm not telling you I don't want you to have a lot of love. I just find it really hard to get people to be loyal to you, to get people to go on a mission with you, to get people to recreate every day, to get people to believe that they can have something they've never had if they've always had it. Right. So yeah. I tend to go to the broken. Right. And I and I take these people and I turn turn their wounds into weapons. Mm. And when I do that, they just become, they're so loyal, man. Well, and the fact is, even before they worked for you, you know, they went through your training, their lives were impacted, and now they get this opportunity to come with you, something that's bigger than them, and mm. it's amazing. And mm. I, I, I've experienced that, too, with the students who have come to work with me. Mm. I guess my question is, as a business owner who would hire you, yeah, it's like, all right, well, I don't have a sales training program where I can just cherry pick the best sales guys, right? So I'm going to tell you how to do this. Okay. So if I came into your program, yep. right, I would say, all right, so number one, I've got kick-ass sales training, okay? By the way, I can sign some username and, and passwords to your team right now. They can start training. They can start learning how to communicate, talk, speak, articulate their words, voice tonality, body language, posture, all this stuff, right? Also, I'm also going to create some training that's niche to you just for your company based on what you do in your systems and process. And I'm going to go back in my lab, record that stuff, and I'm going to drop it in for your team. They may say, well, where does that go on hiring new people? All right, give me a minute. That's for the people we currently have right now. Guy comes up today. He says, hey, Ryan Pineda, I want to work for you. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to assign you a temporary username and password. You see this? Yep. This is a 48-hour password. I want you to go into the Sales Warrior Training Vault, and I want you to study what we do. Mm. I want you to meet me back here in 48 hours, and I'm going to ask you some questions, and I'm going to I'm going to test you, okay? And I'm going to see if you're coachable and if you're able to learn. And if you are, welcome to the team mm. because that's what we do here. We learn every day. That's all I care about is self-improvement. And then if you can't, then obviously it's not right. And if I don't see you in 48 hours, well, then I know that, you know, you don't care. Right. So here's your temporary password. I'll see you on Thursday at 2 p.m. Is that cool? Cool. I'll see you Thursday at 2 p.m. Now, when they leave and I sign them that username and password, that username and password in my training system, you can track every video they watch. So literally, when they come back in Thursday at 2, hey, Ryan, what's going on? Hey, what's up, buddy? Let me go ahead and look over here. I look at my laptop and I click the password that I gave you. And it shows me how many hours of content you watched, what videos you watched, how much you completed, what your journey was, how long you were on. It literally tells me how much time you spent really trying to ensure that you got this job when you got here. Right. See, because they, they don't know that I know that. Right. So I would say, all right, Ryan, so I'm using technology and also I'm going to ask you some questions. All right, Ryan, um, so I want to ask you questions. Um, how many hours did you spend studying the content? Oh, I did uh, at least six or seven hours. Well, it says you did 49 minutes. <laughs> Bam! It's like right there. You're like, dude. Yeah. It says 49. And it, well, yeah. you know, I, I was, uh, <laughs> I, I get it. Anyways, <laughs> rule number one, Ryan, we don't lie to each other around here. Right. That's rule number one. And you're breaking the rule and we just met. <laughs> you see? So, so if you want to know what I would, would you, do. Would you get rid of them right there? Right there, I would ask them, why did you lie to me? Okay. And I would look at them in the eyes. And if they looked away, I wouldn't hire them. Okay. But if you looked at me in the eyes and you say, honestly, I've been working my ass off. I didn't have time to do it. And I'm a piece of shit. Mm. 
I would say, all right, let's continue. Yeah. Because I need people to be able to own their shit because if they can't own it right there on the spot, if they go and say, well, I was, get out of here. Appreciate you, brother. Listen, I love you. I wish you the best, um, but it's not going to work here. Yeah. But then I'm going to say, all right. So if they did do it though, and it does say they did the training, or even if they didn't do it, I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to give you another shot to get out of here because I need to know if you can learn. Now, can you do this? Can I trust you? All right. Now they know that you got the technology. Okay. Accountability is different. They maybe have never been held accountable before, but I would ask them a couple questions. I would say right here, road to the cell A to Z. I noticed you watch this module, right? Cause I'm looking at it right here. I can look in the training center based off light speed that I record my training on, which is Bradley's platform. Yep. That's what I love about data. Yeah. It tells us everything in just two seconds, but I would just ask him, I'd say, all right, so, um, top four objections we get in our industry are kind of like this. We're just going to have a little fun here, right? Hey, I appreciate it, but I got a couple more houses I want to look at before I make a decision. Hey, thank you so much, but I think I'm going to hold off on this right now. I've got a couple other things I want to do. I'll wrap around to this again next year. I'm going to hit them with some things and I'm going to see the way they communicate. Do they look at me in the eyes? Are they scared? Can they have a conversation with me? Are they able to master a stranger? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. The word master a stranger, three words, master a stranger. If you can't master strangers, which you people that don't know you and we're onboarding new clients to our companies every day Mm -hmm. they can't master a stranger we got a problem Mm. not saying i can't teach it but my question is how fast can they learn so if i was if anybody was to call me and say hey i want you to train my team rule number one we'd have to have a training system Mm-hmm. Number two, when we onboard people into our company, we would give them a 48 hour or 24 hour temporary password. And we'd tell them to come back to a second interview in which we're going to ask some questions on the training they did with the first password. Got it. I mean, you're just doing a great job of qualifying them, dude. If they're and, you're, not, and you don't even know their skills, you're just seeing how bad they want it. If they're going to show up and yeah. if they care, I mean, honestly, um, what I've learned about, um, this era right now is that people are really good at giving interviews. Mm. Hey, Ryan, I'm sure what you're looking for is somebody that's going to come in and give everything they got, right? Be willing to self-improve, self-develop, train, be super coachable. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Well, that's what I am, Ryan. See, see, see I can tell you anything and you're going to be like, oh my God, you should see this guy. <laughs> well, he ain't done nothing yet. Yeah. So we assign them a password and then they go do it. But look, there's lots of different ways to do it. I'm just telling you how I do it with my companies. Um, Bradley has Lightspeed. Lightspeed is a multi-million dollar training system. I onboarded with Brad three years ago. I built 1,800 training, sales training Ooh. and leadership modules. Dude, when I'm not on the road traveling, all I do is go into my lab at home, which is my recording studio. And I literally write down every industry and I write down the top objections in that industry. I write down phone training, face-to-face training. I write down how to create your own clients, how to do branding and marketing. I create every video for every niche, for every industry I can possibly imagine. And that way all my people, so that they can train digitally online, because people will come fly out to events, but training isn't something you did. It's something you do every day. Yeah. Like they do it every day. How much training do your guys do every day? What does 20, it look like? 20 minutes. Okay. 20 minutes, man. So Just, they're watching the modules. Yeah. First thing in the morning, 20 minutes before we go out and interact with customers, knock the dust off you. I just call it knocking the dust off you, dude. A sharp ax will cut down trees quick. A dull ax will put a lot of work aren't in. Aren't they working anymore. out before that too? Yeah. Like, well, our team, they all work. So how my company works, which is obviously different than normal companies yeah, yeah. is, but my company, everybody comes in, they work out, um, in the morning, yep. everybody starts work by eight. We work out till, or we work till about one thirty. We take a break at one thirty. Everybody works out for an hour. Again. Yeah. Two days. Yeah. Well, the reason why is because we get our minds right. Yeah. I don't care if they do cardio. I don't care what they do. I just want them to take their minds off the phone for a minute. And then we run till about five 30 and we jump back on. And dude, our revenue has literally doubled with the midday workout. So everyone must do those two workouts to work for you. Yeah. And I, well, they want to. Yeah. See the word must and want to. They're different. I don't yeah. want them. See, I must be successful. I don't want to, but I don't want to make my people think that they have to work out. They should want to be around me because they know that they have an opportunity to have a healthy lifestyle yeah. with my company. How many days a week do they work? Just five days. 
And okay. everybody works the weekends, but they work on their phones. I want them to go They're home. At home. Yeah. yeah, I want them to go and spend time with their family. And if there's people that they can uh, take care of, take care of it at the house. Yeah. I just want to see you Monday through Friday. I want to see your faces. You know, I want to see your eyes. I want to see your presence. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to, you know, I want, I want, I want us how, all this. How competitive does it get in the gym? Super competitive. <laughs> yeah. Even in sales, it's like yeah. super competitive. Like everything with these guys is self-development. Yeah. But the cool thing is, is that they're all out. Alpha, um, as in a sense, like they're alpha leaders, like yeah. they continue to raise the bar, they continue to cr crush records, but they also cheer each other on. So that's why I said, I want you to come down to our, um, our, our company so you can see this, but I got cowbells everywhere. Yeah. So every time somebody sells something, they're being, they're hitting cowbells. It's just nonstop. Dude, it sounds like a damn farm all day long, <laughs> but everybody just cracks up laughing. Yeah. They cheer each other. Good job, Brian. Good job, Brian. Yeah. Everybody's cheering each other on. Dude, like you can't not not be there and not be in a good mood. How much? Walk me through their work day. Like, what are their KPIs they have to hit? How many like outbound dials they doing? What's they that look they like? hit at least two. Well, number one, I know this sounds kind of weird, and a lot of people are like, man, that's weird. So, building a brand, um, we generate about five hundred leads a day. Yep. 500. It's a lot of leads. That's just organic brand. Yeah. Organic coming in, text messages, phone calls, stuff like that. Yep. So there's you don't so, know the quality. It's don't just, know anything about it. They're just yep. coming in. Hey, you changed my life. You know, I want to do this or, Hey, can you tell me about sales training? Or I just started a sales job or I'm thinking about getting into sales. Um, I'm at the top, I'm stuck. You know, it's like, there's lots of different spectrums. Um, but the biggest thing is, is that their follow up. We have a lot of companies that train with us. Um, so we have a lot of fall, we have like 11,000 training, uh, or, uh, companies on our platform. Yeah. So we do a lot of follow up all day long, checking in on owners, checking in on dealers, checking in on companies, checking in on businesses, you know, I mean, just checking in on people saying, Hey, how's the training? Is there any other additional training that you need? Yeah. Like, and people will let us know. So it's, it's all day long that, so usually half the day's follow up, half the day sells. So when you say follow up though, that's just with past customers past customers or people that are going to do business with us that said they were going to get back to us for some reason or another new sales guy says hey i get paid on the first they're they're in their crm they're calling yep. you back hey, it's the first yeah yep, it's the first what's up man let's get you set up yeah um so half their day is 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 answering leads and then half their day is doing follow-up we don't cold call anybody right I know this sounds crazy, but we don't cold call anybody. Like my guys, we've created such a good name. Um, we just don't cold call. Leads anybody. aren't a problem. No, it's just aren't... following up with the database. Yeah, it's like, dude, like, like once you believe in us, like once you commit, we won't let you fail, mm. right? Like, like we're gonna, we'll call you back. We'll stay in touch with you. We'll be with you on your journey. Um, our coaches do a good job of it, dude. Remember, they're obsessed because their life got changed in our company. So they believe in our company so much because it works and they had their own transformation that they don't work like a salesman. And they, it's easy to sell when you are yeah. also a customer. It's like if you're selling Jenny Craig, yeah. but Jenny Craig changed your life and you lost a hundred pounds. Yeah. Like, dude, like you're not pitching Jenny Craig. Yeah. You're like a product of the product. Like you're calling people. And when a guy's like, well, I don't know. You're like, what? Yeah. Oh my God, man. It's like, yeah. it's like, where did this extra energy come from? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, you, you feel like if you, and, and they play with their heart yeah. all day long. Um, you know, so, but that, that our, our guys, they work hard. They probably make about a hundred, you know, outbound calls a day. They probably take outbound being follow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Follow or up past clients. or just past clients. And, um, you know, uh, I allow our guys to also create social media. I mean, a lot of companies don't do that because they don't like it. Yeah. You know, it's like they want me to be the brand. Look, dude, I don't have any problem with my guys building their own brand inside my brand. Yeah. And people say, well, doesn't that scare you? I'm like, listen, dude, I'm going to make my guys great. Okay. Um, I'm going to give them a big opportunity. I'm going to give them a great earning potential. And and listen, if, if, if they ever want to leave, nobody's handcuffed here. I don't want anybody to be here that don't want to be here. Okay. Yeah. You know, I try every day to give these guys the best of everything that I have. Mm -hmm. If it's ever not enough, I gave you all I had. Yeah. What do you think for companies who are, let's say they're seven figure companies trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to get to eight. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm sure the answer is different from eight trying to go to nine. How, how much of a difference does the sales team make? Like huge. Like, yeah. Dude, Tell me about that. Huge. Number one. I mean, there's a couple of things, but. 
but but your CRM, the way that you set up your follow up, the way that you set up your marketing, like what CRM do you guys use? Go high level. Okay. So everything, our whole company is built on go high level, but everything in our company, I, I heavily believe in CRMs. Yep. If your company or your sales team doesn't know how to use technology, dude, they need to be trained on it immediately. And if they won't use it, it's because they don't believe in it or they don't know how to use it or they're the wrong person for your company. Right. So we need to make some decisions and we've got, and the leaders can only do that. But um, how much does the sales team uh, make? Well, it's simple. Whatever product you have, I'm going to ask you a question. Is it good for everybody? Should everybody have it? Yeah. Can your, can your salespeople explain value? Mm. Like not tell us the information. Can they explain value? Right. When value exceeds price, price isn't a problem. Right. When salespeople can sell value and they can close people on value and they can paint pictures, tell stories and show people how it works for people that are just like them. Right. Then people become sold because they want it. And that's, and so sales teams, dude, by the way, 90% of sales teams, their number one problem is, is they're untrained. Right. Period. Right. They don't know their sales process. They physically don't even know how to do their job. Mm -hmm. This is 90% of their problem. They listen, this is so stupid. I can't believe we're even talking about this, but this is the truth. They don't know how to do their job. If I walked into a McDonald's right now and I walked over to the person flipping burgers and I said, hey, flip a couple burgers for me in front of me. They'd flip burgers because McDonald's teaches them to flip burgers. Sales companies don't teach people to sell. And when they do teach them to sell, they don't make them role play in front of all the other salespeople to ensure that they can flip the burger. Yeah, I've seen you do that on social media. They don't know how to do it. Yeah. So why are why is the money ten percent or a half of what it should be, dude? We've taken companies from twenty million to fifty million within ninety days, like mm. in the tracking end. How? Teach their people a sales process that they believe in that mm -hmm. they'll follow. Remember this: if your sales team isn't good, but you say, "Well, we've got a sales process," they don't follow it. Well, number one, who's in charge? Yeah. That would be my first question, and number two. They don't believe in the sales process. Right. That's why they're not doing it. Right. Do you think that they would do it if they believed in it and they've had results? Yep. Yeah. They don't believe in it. Mm. Okay. So what I commonly see is that companies think that this is the best way to do it, but the teams don't believe it's the best way to do it. So everybody's just doing their own shit. Yeah. And that's the reason why numbers are all over the place. Yeah. And honestly, it's so chaotic that the person in charge can't handle it anymore, become frustrated. Now they want to fire people instead of coach and train people. What do you look for in a good sales manager? Um, accountability himself. Your team will only work half as hard as you. Mm. You better be the hardest worker in that office. When I go in and I see a sales manager or a leader sitting in their office and their team over here, I'm out. Mm. He's not connected. He don't care about these people. He's here for his check. Get rid of them. Yeah. Okay. I want people to be on the front line with their team at all times, listening to every phone call. Like, be there. Like, come on, Ryan. coaching them up. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Hey, listen. Shh, you're good. Listen. They're about to say you're totally cool. Come on. Push through. Push through. You're good. You're good. You're good. They need to be right there with them. But no, they're not right there with them. You know where they're at? And sitting on their ass in their office. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you know what? Now, this guy's failing and you're not there for him. That means you're not his mentor. That means you're his boss. Yeah. Okay? And nobody respects a boss. How many, how many sales leaders. manager or how many people would you have under one sales manager? You know, it depend on the technology you had. Because you can have technology where you can listen to people's calls when they're done. And yep. I could literally listen to everybody's calls. But there's nothing like standing in front of somebody. So I think one leader to every 20 sales reps. Okay. Now, do you guys have like setters and closers or juniors Everybody's and a closer. Okay. I have leaders that have been in my company for the last three to four years with me since day one. Yeah. Those leaders are in charge of other leaders. Okay. And then those leaders are in charge of the other leaders. Everything is layered. Because once we got bigger, there was no way that we could talk to everybody at one time. I mean, I'm the, I'm the standard setter. Yeah. And my wife is too, but I can't manage everybody's calls. No. That's why you create leaders. Yeah. And people respect the leader above them because they've been with me. They're tried, true, and tested. Mm -hmm. They've never quit. They've never failed me. They've been next to me and their numbers represent it. Right. You know, so, um, so I would say create later layers of leadership as your team, you know, it's like go wider and go deeper. Yeah. Right. So we go wide. I got six or eight wide on guys and then I've got their 10 deep underneath yeah. each one of them or, or 12 deep. So with your team, 
you know, obviously you guys are like literally as close knit as it gets. You work mm -hmm. out together twice a day. Go to church, everything. Church, everything. It's amazing. And it's not a requirement. Like, listen, you got to understand it's not a requirement. Everybody wants to. Right. Okay. Again, goes back to the leader. And I want to say this. If I carried around, see this, if I carried around a wealthy way coffee cup all yep. day long. Yep. I think if you're a good leader, your team will be like, dude, I need a wealthy way coffee cup. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like. I carry around a gallon of water all day, okay? I drink a gallon of water every day. I yeah. carry it with me. I start it in the morning. I put three scoops of BCAAs in yep. it every morning. Yep. Guess what my team does? Gallon <laughs> of water, scoops. three scoops of Hey, hey boss, how many how many scoops are you doing? <laughs> Dude, if yeah. I was like three and a half. Is there anything else? Three and a half. Any yeah, they're like creatine, anything. <laughs> like they want to know why. Yeah. Because, because that's what leaders do. Yeah. You know you what's know? funny is I, uh, two weeks ago for the first time ever, I started like, really taking i was like you know what i'm gonna take my health like to the next level because mm -hmm. i've been lean oh yeah but i'm like you know what screw it so for the first time ever i got on trt and mm -hmm. i got on peptides mm -hmm. and like i've already gained five pounds in two weeks yeah and i'm like this is freaking crazy but it's so funny because everyone now is like bro like where do we get the peptides and see <laughs> that's it well no but that's a great sign yeah that's a great sign, dude. And that's why I'm telling you that like, that's, that's what I want you to know is that like, yeah, how many people do we need assigned, um, to, to 20 people to 50 people? Well, well I don't know. Like what, like how, how, how committed is the leader? Yeah. You know, is the, is the leader, you know, like great is the leader trying to self-improve every day to inspire the team? Yeah. I mean, cause really dude, I think a lot of companies, they settle man. And, um, anyways, it's just well, bottom line it's never been easier to win. Yeah. Never, Ryan. Yeah. Um, it's amateur hour all around the world. Yeah. Okay. From leaders to sales reps, sales reps don't believe in their companies. A lot of companies are saying that the sales reps suck. You know, a lot of people say, Hey, I met my manager. I could tell he was important. A lot of people say I met my leader. You know, I could feel I was important. Yeah. Great leaders make their people feel important. You know, great people that work in companies want to make their leaders proud. Yeah. If this stuff is going opposite, my number one deal would be who's in charge. I could probably walk into a company. I could probably see how many bathroom breaks are being taken. I could probably see how many people are playing on their phones. I could probably see how many phone calls are being made. I could probably walk around the office and listen to the energy and the tonality and the belief of the company. Yeah. I could probably tell within two or three hours what is the problem. Yeah. It's an easy fix. And literally most companies are missing tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. Um, pest control company. I just took a pest control company that was running $300 per house, which is unreal. Yeah. $300. The other, most are doing around 125 yeah. to 150, $300 per house. 90 days later, they're running 750 per home. It's, it's way out of company league standards. Like nobody does this stuff. And their customer, uh, their, uh, their, uh, like surveys yeah. through the roof mm. just by training their people. Okay. Um, so I'm not a pest control salesman, right? Yeah. I've never sold pest control, but I have different language. I have a different way of speaking. I have a different way of talking. I have a different way of articulating my words. I have a different way that I think. So when I get in front of these sales teams, I teach them the way that I operate with what they already know. Yeah. Boom. They're dangerous. I would recommend that if you're going to hire somebody and you know, we, I know we've been running this for a while, but if you're going to hire a sales trainer in your company, if you do door to door sales, don't hire a door to door salesman. Okay. Hire somebody that's just killer at sales, which is why we do this because I don't sell real estate. I've never sold a house, but I handled the interest rate on the house. Hey, date the rate, marry the payoff. You know, yeah. however, eight months ago, you know, if you were to buy a house, you'd have had been in a bill. It's common sense. Yeah. But I wrote that down, I memorized it, and if I was to sell, I would just say that. Now, my point is, is how many people, though, they go teach all these door-to-door -door companies or they go teach all these solar companies or all these insurance companies? I blew Bradley's insurance company up. Yeah. I've never sold an insurance policy in my life. <laughs> how? It's easy. All these other people that train insurance, they're all teaching and saying the same thing and they're regurgitating it. Yeah. I'm not saying anything like them because I'm not even listening to what they're saying. Yeah, you're coming up with your own things. Yeah, so I just want to say if you want to be different, be different. How much of sales do you think is, I would say, scripted versus um, just natural? I think in the beginning it has to be a script Yeah. until you memorize it. 
And then once you memorize it, you start to like internalize, like, why did I, why was that the script that we learned? Yeah. And then you're like, you know, you know what, you know, I'm going to change it like you this. You got your own like little that. flair to it. Yeah. And then, and then, by the way, I'm going to explain this. And, and 20% of sales, 20% is a script. Maybe 10. Yeah. People are like, no, dude, if you know what to say, you know the right words, bullshit. <laughs> Tonality is probably 60%. Mm. Tonality in the way you say things. And then probably another 30% would be your body language and your right. eye contact. Right. Like, dude, go look at anybody that shakes your hand, that sells you anything, that talks to you in their Their body language is dog shit. Yeah. Their eye contact is dog shit. The, the way that they, they, they speak to you is crap. Their tonality means they're, they're, pro, they're, they're giving you information and they're not giving you a transformation. They're giving you information. They don't even believe in their product. Right. Like, here's the, here's the list of what yeah, we like, have. But they know the script. Yeah. You know? So anyways, I would just tell you that, yeah, the words do matter. But we teach tonality. If I, if you learn your script and then I can't believe you when you're giving it to me, I'm still not going to buy from you even though you get script right. How many of your sales guys have kind of your tonality and personality? Because, you know, like you said, you're an intense guy. And yeah. then you see some sales guys who are like your best friend. And half and half. Half and half. Yeah, because some of them, they're just not built that way. They're like me. Yeah, they're just not built that way. You know, Brad Lee's completely different than me. Yeah. Um, but if you put us together... We can probably close any deal because the way he operates is completely different than me. Good cop, bad cop. Yeah, but like I'm a passion driver, yeah. right? Like I'm I'm gonna drive it home in and passion, and you're gonna look in my eyes and say, "Dude, this guy believes." Like I think I'm sold. And um, some people they're just so good at just you know sell like a lion but act like a lamb, mm. right? Like just just ultra. I call it the velvet hammer. Mm. Like you're a hammer, yeah, but you got velvet on it. Yeah. Like nobody knows that. So you don't have to be the hardcore closer and I'm not either. It depends on who I'm talking to. I can adjust. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like everybody's different. Half my team is like me. Half of them aren't like me. The ones that have all the energy, you know, like, um, they, they do the produce. Twins. Yeah. I mean, the twins produce higher numbers than a lot of the other guys. Um, you know, they, it uh, seems like, and especially the coaching space, a lot of people don't believe in themselves, yeah. you know, and the twins will just, ah! you know, they'll just get <laughs> Dude, in. They're you. crazy. You know? Yeah. So like they'll get into you. They'll run around the whole event and, and just, just, yeah. And, and they don't care. And people are like, oh, those guys are stupid. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care. They don't care, man. Look, we're so used to getting made fun of, dude. Yeah. It's just, we don't even see it anymore, man. You yeah. know, once you start realizing the good that comes out of changing, you honestly realize that the bad is, is nothing. nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, so what do you do with companies that have remote sales teams? Because I would say majority of our salespeople are remote. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, most are nowadays. Yeah. Because I mean, I want to hear your perspective. Obviously you guys are all in house and you're building something special that I don't know that anyone else has. Mm -hmm. And then you hear the other people are like, well, remote's easier. You can get access to better talent, mm -hmm. you know, all these things. Well, so like our insurance company with Brad Lee is remote. Okay. Okay. So like we, we train remote and it's very easily. Um, A1 Garage Doors, there's a guy named Tommy Mello. Tommy Mello owns A1 Garage Doors, largest garage door company in the world. I train all of his people, just as an example, remotely. Um, automotive dealers. I train, you know, all the automotive industries. Just give an example. They're all remotely. Yeah. Every everybody's remote. Um, Zoom is a very beautiful thing. And that's why you have to have a training system and then you have to have somebody test your people. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what I would do. If you had a remote sales team and you go, Hey Andy, I want to make sure that my team is is as great as possible. Number one, they'd have a training system. Yep. They'd have a training system. They'd be required to watch four modules a day that are five minutes each for 20 minutes a day. And then at the end of that week, if they didn't hit that, like, dude, like they would have to pay for the training that you pay. Yeah. And if they would hit that, then money wouldn't come out of their check for it. Right. So it's like, dude, if you don't want to pay, like if you're not going to do the training, then you're going to pay. Yeah. Okay. But, but if you'll be a trusted client or you'll be my trusted, you know, my, my, my guy, then yeah. like, I'll pay for it. Yep. Okay. But by I the way, see like, you get better. Yeah. And by the way, like it's stupid if I have to ask you to get better, to make your family more money. Right. right? Um, but anyways, at the end of each month, my coaches or myself will get on Zoom calls with sales teams. This is why our company um, works. And I didn't talk about this part yet, which is super important. People train during the month. They train on four or five objections. They train on a certain presentation. They train on something that happens in their industry, maybe a pitch. You know what I'm saying? Like if it was solar, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say I'm a new solar rep, right? You go into the solar training and then it says, all right, new solar rep at the door. You knock. Like that. Yep. 
Hey, how you doing, sir? My name's Andy Elliott. My company has been allocated to this area because research shows in the next 12 to 18 months, utility bills are going to double or triple. I've got two quick questions to ask you, then I'll be on my way. And if you want some additional information, I'll go over it with you. Is that okay? Yep. Cool. Question number one, do you believe you'll have energy all the days of your life? See the electricity, the lights, all that? It's right off energy. Do you think you always want energy or do you ever see yourself running a house off candles? <laughs> Probably not, right? Yeah. So you always have energy. Number two, do you believe inflation is real? Yep. Yeah, stuff's costing more money. Well, since you answered yes to the first two questions, I got a third question. If your energy bill went to $5,000 a month, hypothetically, if it did, and you didn't want to pay it, you would have to run your house off candles, which you said you'd <laughs> never do. I want to ask you something. If there was a secondary energy option, a secondary energy option, which you qualified for that would allow you to save money and be inflation proof, would you want to know about it? Mm -hmm. Would you? Yep. Cool. Hi, my name's Andy Elliott. Mm. Look, see that? My job is to get the information from the people who have it, which is us at ABC Solar, to the homeowners, or which are you, that want to have control of your, or of your money and make your own decisions and own your own stuff like you own your house. Does that right. make sense? Yep. Okay. I just did a pitch. Yep. I don't sell solar. <laughs> I was a solar rep. I watched that. I've trained on it all month. Okay. Now you got the leaders. Dude, they got to step out. Yeah. Manager, step out. We're on a Zoom meeting. I got 100 people. I got 10 people. I get on, what's up guys, Andy Elliott, you know what today is? Today you're gonna tell me what you know. Now I know you guys been training at the door, right? Yeah. So here we go, Johnny, ready, knock, knock. And I'm hitting them on the Zoom, Yeah. and the leaders have to listen to their people. Mm. And it's like, uh, I just, um, I wanted to, I was in your neighborhood. <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> what are you doing? Did that sound like, hey, my name's Andy Elliott, our company's been allocated to this area because research shows in the next, Johnny, did it sound like that? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, Johnny, where you been at, buddy? What are we doing? <laughs> Johnny's like, oh, well, I, Johnny, that's not going to fly. Yeah. You don't get to work at McDonald's if you can't flip burgers. You don't get to work in solar if you can't knock on a door. This is where the leaders, I tell them, shh, let me talk to your people. Mm. You sit over there and listen. Okay. This is my time. I'm going to let you know what your people understand and what they've been learning. Mm-hmm. And so that's why our training program works. Cause at the end of every 30 days, we skill test every team. Mm. So how often do you spend training sales at this point? I spend a lot of time creating the, uh, the online yeah. training platform. I'm the only trainer in our company. So Got I'm it. the trainer. There's, they're the coaches, but on big accounts, um, I mean, I get on them all the time just yeah. because you love it. Yeah. I love it. Like, and I can look in people's eyes and I can say, Hey dude, listen, you did a good job on the script, but dude, I don't believe you. Mm. And, and I love you, but like, I need you to look in the mirror and I need you to record yourself and look at what you're saying, man. Yeah. Like, like you got to believe a little more mm. and dude, these people make these little changes. Companies make a shitload more money. They make more money. Everybody's freaking happy. What's the biggest mistake you see salespeople make? They don't believe in themselves. Mm. Biggest mistake. We mm. always say you'll never out earn your own self image. You'll never out earn your own self worth. People don't believe in themselves. Mm. That's number one deal. Dude, if they believed in themselves, they would study their asses off yeah. because they would understand the earning opportunity. Dude, if you give a salesman a level 10 earning opportunity and he has a level two skill, but he's got a training platform, he don't believe in himself or she don't believe in himself or they don't care. Mm. I have a hard time believing that people don't care. Right. I, I, have, I think that companies don't hold standards very high. And I think that companies tolerate a lot of stuff they shouldn't tolerate. It's kind of like if I was a girl and I let my husband cheat on me, mm. I mean, eventually he would just not care anymore. Mm -hmm. Like there, ha there has to be consequences Yeah. in which you say, if you don't train, you're gone. Mm. Hey, I love you guys. I'm just not going to spend my whole life begging you. Look, dude, Ryan, you're, you're 35 years old. Do you need a babysitter? <laughs> I mean, yeah. no, I don't. Well, it sounds like you do. <laughs> because I told you to train, you're not doing it. Okay. Like I don't want to have to babysit you. Right. Like, like, like this is weird to me. Like I want to come in, give you a level 10 earning opportunity, give you a training system, which you can do. Make sure that you know that I believe in you, be here to support you and watch you grow. How do you, how do you handle hierarchy? Right? Because there's going to be your top performers and we want to show them love and mm -hmm. let them know they're killing it. And then you're going to have your bottom performers who are you know, they're not pulling their weight, right? We want to pull them up, but 
you know, there's then there's going to be people who used to be high performers who are now not performing. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you balance that? To to me, again, it's it's so repetitive, but it's just training. Yeah. Like like cultures create people. Okay, cultures, right? So like, if you don't have a training culture, you're going to have these problems, right? Like if you don't have a self-improvement culture, you're going to have these problems, man. Yeah. If you don't have a sales meeting every day, yeah. you're going to have these problems. Yeah. Like all these things are created because of cultures. Yeah. So if I walk into a culture that has never had sales meetings every morning or they don't have them mm -hmm. and they don't have training every morning and they don't make people role play every morning because they're too busy to do it, well, yeah. they're too busy to grow. Yeah. You know what's crazy now that I think about it as an athlete is, you know, there's game day. And you got to go perform. That's your life, right? That's you talking to the prospects. But what do you do before game day? You take batting practice. You get mm -hmm. ground balls. You play catch. You stretch. You prep. You get in the ice bath, the mm -hmm. sauna. You do it. You get your workout in. You do all that stuff so that you are prepared for game day. Yeah. And yet in business, we just kind of walk in. We want to play the game. Yeah. Straight to the game. Dude. And by the way, how so many businesses... When you start talking to about training, you know the first thing they say? Our people won't do it. Mm. Our people won't do it. We've tried to get them to do it. Yeah. Who's in charge? Mm. Just somebody show me who's in charge. When, when does the prison give the keys over to the inmates? <laughs> yeah. Like, what's going on here? Yeah. Right? Well, and I think to your point, you said this before too, right? One of two things is happening. One is that, you know, they don't believe in themselves. That's, mm -hmm. that's one reason they fail. Or two... They don't believe in the thing, the system, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, they don't believe in the sales process or whatever it is. Also, also, we've we've said standard a hundred times on this um, on this podcast. Yep. And if we were to end it with standard, like standard, like dude, like if you don't hold your people to a standard, like there'll be no standard. Right. Okay. So I would say this, Ryan. Let's say you're not doing the training. Yep. I'm gonna say, hey, Ryan, and let's say you're a high performer, or mm -hmm. let's say you're one of the top guys. Yeah. Even, because they're always like, well, my top guys don't need to do the training. Right. No, no, they do. They need to do it so they can show the guys that are below them that training is important. Right. Because the guys at the bottom look up to them. If the guys at the top aren't doing it, they're not going to do it. What do you do if a top guy's like that? Very Watch. And by the way, listen, you got to understand this. Everything's got to come from a place of love. Yeah. Okay. Because if I come at you as a top performer, you don't like to be told what to do. Exactly. Okay. And I don't like to be told what to do. But if I say, hey, Ryan, listen, you know, I love you, right? Right. Yep. Okay. See, I'm starting it out that way. You know, right. I love you, right? Right. When I bought this training system, I want to tell you kind of how I envisioned it playing out. And I want to see if you'd help me. And, you've, and you know I would help you with whatever you wanted. Just ask me. I'll give it to you right now. Mm -hmm. I need you to help me with this. Let me tell you what I envisioned. Number one, when you do the training, it shows the people that are coming in that aren't growing as fast as you did or aren't you that training is important. And I'm trying to create a new standard. Now, this is my fault. Okay. I should have had you guys training a long time ago. Yeah. I, I got the opportunity early on to spend a lot of time with you and I'm not, I don't have the same time to spend with these guys. Yeah. This training system is made to raise the standard of our company. And if you don't do it, I can't ask them to do it. Okay. I just, I can't ask them to do it. And by the way, I want them to look up to you. Like I want you to be the model for them. Right. So what I'm asking is this, is that if you're not doing the training, do you think that lowers the standard of the company or raises it? It lowers it. Right. And I envisioned you leading the training program, you yourself and a couple of the other guys leading the way for these other guys to follow. Mm -hmm. Could you make an exception just one time for me? Help me raise the standard in the company. Can you guys do the training a couple modules a day? Just do it for me. And whatever you need, do it for me. Whatever you need, I'll, I'll be happy to give you in return. I'm trying to help change these guys' lives. Could you do that for me? Mm. Yeah, I could do it. Okay, thank you so much, man. I knew you would, and I'm sorry that maybe I explained it wrong, but I wanted to tell you, I saw you leading the way. You're an amazing leader. Thank you for, for being so great. Like, dude, you got to make it their idea. Yeah. I mean, that's the close. Right. You know, but what we do, hey, if you don't train, you're out of here. Well, they're going to leave, dude. Right. You know why? They're alphas. They don't like to be told what to do. Right. These people have a hard enough time already working for someone else. Yeah, true. Right? So it's like, dude, you got to make it their idea. You got to say, hey, man, I'm trying to raise this. And then the, the guys that are at the bottom, if they're not training, you're like, dude, you either are lowering the standard of the company or raising it. And if you're going to lower it, which means you're not going to do the training and put up low numbers, then like you just show me you don't care. 
But if you're training your ass off and I see you doing the work, but when we're trying to coach you, but the, the numbers are, I can be patient with that. Yeah. You know, but like, I can't be patient when you're not training and you're not hitting your numbers. Yeah. Because you know, if you're putting in the right input, Mm -hmm. It's going to pay off over time. Yeah. Repetition is the mother of skill. Repetition, practice. Dude, there's a mindset, skill set, habit, three things, which every entrepreneur says that you have to learn to be great. What, how would you advise companies to recruit salespeople? Social media. And by yeah. the way, the leader can't, you can't hire people that the leader's not. So like if there's not a good leader in the company, dude, if your leader is a loser, you're not going to recruit anybody because anybody you recruit in, they're not going to work for this guy. Right. Like, so like, just like, make sure you have good leaders. But to me, social media is dangerous. Yeah. You know, with Brad Lee, when we built his insurance company, I mean, it was pretty simple. It's like, if you're making less than a quarter of a million a year and you want to work for yourself, I mean, 7,000 people came in overnight. Right. It's like social media is the most dangerous thing. But you know what business owners say? I don't have time for that. Right. You don't have time for what? Dude, everybody and their dog is on their phone. Mm -hmm. People don't even drive down the road anymore. Look at the road. They're on their phone. Right. People don't even go sit down and have dinner anymore. They're on their phone. Right. Everybody's on their phone. So if everybody's on their phone, you don't have time for where everybody's at. Right. Your dumbass is putting, <laughs> is putting ads on LinkedIn still. <laughs> Dude. Like, are, like, so my, again, we're going to go back to building a brand. I would say if I was a leader, I would go, I would show that I exercise. I would show my wife's important and I would show a day in the office for a little clip. Yeah. And then literally whenever I got on there and said, Hey, if you obviously know how I run, I love my family. I love having a great earning opportunity. I love staying in great shape. You know, if this is something that you want to do and you're under, earning under a quarter of a million a year, DM me or text me. I'd love to talk to you. Yeah. Like, dude, like those are your people. Yeah. They already follow you. Yeah. Like, so if you want to know how to recruit, like, that's what I would do. Like, if you needed a hundred people right now to come work for you, like that's, that's easy. Yeah. Like you're not even worried about it. It's yeah. the people that don't have a brand they have to worry about. And by the way, brands don't take that long, um, to build, not for hiring. Right. You could get a, you could get a thousand or 2000 followers and you could probably hire 10 of the right people. Yeah. I guess our problem is filtering, right? Yeah. So you got to have a right hand man. Yeah. Again. Well, I, I don't hire people, but like our no. hiring. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. I mean, somebody else has to go through the process who literally you've trained yeah. and that think the same way you think. Do you have like an in-house, uh, I would say recruiter who's that's all they do. Nope. It's really easy. If somebody, so if I normally will catch talent with my eyes, yeah. people that have gone through our program, maybe my wife will, she'll be like, I really like this guy or somebody on my team will say, Hey, have you noticed him? Once we identify talent, number one, I have a talk with them. Number two, my wife actually tries to talk them out of working for us, which means she has a conversation. Mm. We also talk to their spouse yeah. so that we can see whether they're going to be supportive of them if they don't grow fast enough. Hey, what happens if Ryan works here for six months? And, you know, he's been doing this and now he's going to be doing this and he's not used to doing that. Right. But he believes he could be good at it. But what if in six months he's not good at it? He's right. not making enough money. Will you support him or, yeah. or will he go back to his old job? Right. If they say, well... You're out. Mm. Okay. Because you know how I am. Like you got to die with us. I mean, right. that's the way I am. Like I'm looking for long-term stuff. You're not looking to mentor somebody for a year, then train them up to go work for your competition. Right. Okay. So like you want to make sure that's the right deal. Once if my wife did talk to them and they passed both of us, then we would turn it to the team. Right. I would say, Hey, I need you to fly in. I'm going to have you talk to my team. My team hires everybody. We just don't hire anybody. We believe in you. We like you. But if our team doesn't feel like you're the right fit, it's not going to work. If mm. they do, welcome to the team. Mm. So when can you fly out? We're going to let our, our team know that they can have 30 minutes to, to speak with you. Wow. And then our team, if they say, Andy, we want to hire him or her, then guess what? Yeah. We know our team are going to make sure they're going to make it. And that's why your turnover is so low. Because to go the through the so teams many buying. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because once the team hires them, then everybody's bought in. Because you know when you bring a new guy to the company, like, hey, guys, we want to introduce Mike. Yeah. Everybody's like, who the fuck's Mike? You know, so, <laughs> right? But if you bring them all in yeah. and they brought them in, well, then everybody's like, come on, Mike. Come yeah. on, Mike. Yeah. You know? So that's our goal is that, like, I'm going to let our team have the final say yeah. because I'm not going to babysit them. Yeah. We've got training. We've got leadership. But also, you guys hired him. Yeah. Okay, so they can't come to me and complain about them after they hired them because they hired them. Mm, yeah. See, so that's good. So I would I would tell you that any company 
they should involve their team hiring people that they bring on should involve yeah maybe not final decision but it involve and get the team's input and, if, and by the way i'm gonna explain something to you me and my wife we found somebody that we thought was going to be really good and my team goes don't hire that guy wow and i was like why and they're like because we have a bad feeling about him dude six months we didn't hire him six months later we started seeing some stuff they were doing and my guys like see that and i was like damn man you know like like your team is smart dude yeah like sometimes your team like they care about you a lot ryan and like they don't want to see you make a mistake right and our team doesn't have a scarcity mindset so we're not like well if we hire mike then the rest of us are going broke yeah because there's not enough money yeah dude there's plenty of money so our team's not worried about that yeah looks like the the team is getting kind of antsy over here so last question is Go. with that being said like how do you divvy up leads and everything how does that work a b and c team okay a team top closers they know the product the best they can talk to anybody they're getting you the know. most qualified leads mm -hmm. yep, yep then B and then obviously C. So you can work your way up from C's C. C's like a book lead. Like somebody bought a book from you. Yep. And we're like, hey man, I know you got, you know, Ryan's book, you know, The Wealthy Way. We just wanted to reach out real quick and, you know, make sure you got the book. Hey, what do you think about it? Obviously we know that, you know, it wasn't just about getting the book. You wanted something inside the book, but there's probably something you wanted to get like that the book was going to do for you. Right. 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 Was it to increase revenue to, 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 for investing? You know, what was the goal? And then their goal is to ask a couple of questions and figure out where to go. Our top guys, this is like somebody reaching out saying, Hey Andy, I've got a solar team, 30 people, 50 people. Hey, I've got a company. Yeah. Hey Andy, I run a fitness program, you know, and I want you to come talk to my team. Long story short, they say, Hey, Andy doesn't take money just from anybody that's got a pulse and a credit card. Right. Okay. Like if he's going to spend time with your team, I need to know how close are you wanting to get to Andy? Yeah. Like, tell me what's in it. Tell me about your company. Like, dude, they're high level people having high level conversations and we're figuring out really where do we need to replace them? Do we need to place them in a digital training system? Yeah. Is this something where their team needs to fly in? Do we need to fly out? Like, what do we need to do here? How much money is, is this thing going to cost? And, 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 you know, like, like really, cause we don't care about what it costs. We care about like, how can we solve your problem? Right. And the guys at the top know how to solve problems really quick and they won't prescribe something when a lower amateur person might not know well enough cause they ain't been with me for three or four years. Yeah. They don't know. Like we'll, we'll create a new product for this right. guy, dude, which happens all the time. Yeah. Hey, look, we need a white label, a training center for you guys. We yeah. currently aren't in this. It sounds like the normal training center won't work. We're going to have to niche down. Speaking of that, you know, we have lots of new products all the time mm -hmm. and sometimes we'll switch up things and everything else. What I found is our team has a tough time adjusting mm -hmm. to a different product. Yep. Do you um, see that happen? Yep. So, so anytime you release a new product, it's like squirrel. It's like they go over <laughs> here and they forget about that. Right. Yeah. That's why you got to train on it every day. Right. Listen, it just requires more training to get them it, used to Dude, the pitch and what people, it is. People hate this conversation. Yeah. When you say train, people check out. Yeah. Okay. How about self develop? How about level up? How yeah. about make more money? How about go to another level? It's, it's got to be something. Yeah. But, but if, dude, listen, if your axe isn't sharp, you're not going to sell it. And by the way, if you create a new product, try to deliver a product to me yeah. without being good at it. Mm. I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. So like if you put out a new product, I would tell people you're not allowed to sell the new product until you can pitch it three times in a row. Yeah. Well, like what I have found is, what will happen sometimes is we'll release a new product or re, you know, we've, we're in the process of like really understanding who we are. Cause we're a young company when it's really like all said Facts. and done. And what will happen is, you know, sales guys go back to what they know and they're like, Oh, well we know we can sell this. Mm -hmm. So let me go for the, for sure base hit versus sell this thing. Yeah. And it's just because you're not confident in it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why someone has to be there testing your people all the time. Right. And if that isn't there, then just expect your people to be amateurs. Yeah. Like, dude, don't expect to grow your company if your people don't get better. Right. Right. There's marketing, there's inventory, there's buildings, and there's human capital. Right. Okay. And if the people that are talking to your people aren't getting better, you're not going to make more money. And mm. by the way, like if things get tough, you're going to crash. Hmm. Okay. I'm always figuring out how to recession proof our company, yeah. how to make sure that everybody's great. And we're not afraid of anything else hitting us. Yeah. Like we're ready. I love it. So that's our goal is that success favors are prepared, which you've talked about the whole time. Yeah. Well, dude, I always love hanging out with you, man. I'm glad Me you too. get to come to Vegas a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that, you know, you, you're a friend and you've spoken at WealthCon and I'm inspired to go ramp these boys up and 
you know, get them into shape. And dude, you're helping a lot of people, man, not just in sales, but everything we talked about on the first half of this podcast, mindset, family, health, like it's all so important. Yeah, earn it all. Earn it all. So where can people find you? Yeah. Official Andy Elliott. Yep. Super simple. I think if anybody wants to reach out to me, just DM me on official Andy Elliott. Yep. Instagram's easy. I mean, I got a big YouTube channel, but I would just say official Andy Elliott. Okay. Somebody wants to reach out, just shoot me a DM. And then boom. Yeah, and it's easy. You Make know, people hand. can text. I mean, I've got a text number, which is the 918-210-0254. Yep. You can text that. But if you message me on Instagram, I mean, that's easy too. Cool. And that way I can really see who you are and, you know, we'll figure out what you want to do. But you keep growing. I'm growing. I know that your audience is pushing and growing. Yeah. So I love being here. It's an honor to be yeah. here, man. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah. Congratulations on your baby. I know yep. you just had one. So yep. who knows where we'll be next time we shoot this. A couple more kids, couple, you know, a couple more businesses. Who knows? Exactly. Well, guys. Give Andy a round of applause in the comments. Let him know. Show him some love. Go get with him if you're trying to train your sales team. And make sure you're subscribed to this channel. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Go to school. Get a degree. 9 to 5. 401k. Do the safe route and take care of your family. Like, that's what my dad taught. Like, that's what you got to do. Two months later, he passed away. And on his deathbed, I specifically remember having conversations about his regrets.